mic stop. Cardi B throws her microphone mid-performance after a fan splashes her with a drink on stage. Inside the latest incident in a dangerous trend at concerts this summer. And Magic Monday, one of the world's top magicians, is stopping by as he gets set to make his Broadway debut. We'll kick off the week with a jaw-dropping trick right here on our plaza today, Monday, July 31st, 2023. Mom, 71st gift. A trip to the Today Show! Visiting from Eau Claire, Wisconsin! Fort Madison, Iowa! Chesterfield, Virginia! We're back at 812 launching into our special series. We're calling it Today in the Wild. Okay, we are going to start at Crocodile Lake National Wildlife Refuge. It's in Key Largo, Florida, and Sam Brock is there with an exclusive look this morning at the efforts underway to save the American croc. Hey, Sam, watch out there behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Savannah, good morning. Wait, watch out for what? Look, right now we are at a situation where American crocodiles were endangered as recently as 15 or 16 years ago in 2007. They are now, guys, endangered. But it is such a fragile process. Thanks to the work of marine biologists and biologists here, they've been able to turn back the tide of the population from under 100 to thousands now. But it is a very fragile process as you're seeing things like sea level rise and erosion continue to deplete their habitat, making spaces like these, as I'm sitting in the middle of the mangroves here, critical for crocs. Over a sprawling 6,500 acres on Florida's Key Largo, the Crocodile Lake National Wildlife Refuge might not be teeming with the tropical-based reptiles, but they're far more plentiful than just a few decades ago and trending in the right direction. What kind of a difference have these efforts made in resurrecting the American crocodile population? So we went from a population of around 70 individuals to um, about 2,500 adults. American crocodiles are native to a large stretch of land from Florida to the Caribbean, Mexico, Central and South America, and they were fighting extinction. Until pioneers here sealed off this refuge, the only one of its kind in the country, set up some sand berms and let nature take its course. Crocodiles will actually seek out these higher elevation areas and use them for nesting. Jeremy Dixon oversees the refuge, the only full-time employee, though he has lots of helping hands, including the mama crocodile. You can see she's moved out all the sand. They'll actually have to know that the crocodiles are ready to hatch, and they'll dig them up and carry them in their mouth so to what's the your water. <laughs> I provide the nesting material for them, yes. In reality, it's a pretty detailed scientific strategy with so-called croc docs like Sergio Balaguerra Reina using broken shells as clues to find hatchlings that require a little bit of intuition and lots of listening to locate. How does the mama crocodile know when the hatchlings are ready and what does she do? The hatchlings start peeping, so they start doing a particular sound. It's like... <coughs> so the mama will hear That's that a signal. Sound. Exactly. <coughs> Hey, little guy. <laughs> the same signal ricochets through the refuge as the croc technicians enter the water looking for hatchlings. Here's number two. Of the 30 to 35 eggs in each nest, there's no saying how many in the crocodile clutch will survive. But Sergio and the team round up the cute little critters. How long will these like crocodiles stay hand-sized for? So in a year, they will duplicate their size. Who can live for up to 70 years, growing as much as 15 feet in size and weighing thousands of pounds, though many are hundreds. So right now, we will just count how many we got. Six, seven, eight. The gathering then leads to some good old-fashioned measurements, noting the length of the hatchlings. It's 12.3 centimeters, snout to vent. And their weight before the last step, claiming a little clip of the tail called a scute to keep track of the reptile's growth. The part he's cutting off for oh. DNA analysis. The exercise helps to catalog a species that's still fragile. How many hatchlings did you end up finding? We got 17 tonight from this nest. 
So 17 hatchlings going back into the crocodile population. The reptile serves a critical role in balancing the ecosystem by controlling the population of other species as they now continue to grow and thrive under the care of a crocodile team keeping close tabs <laughs> on where they surface next. Now guys, I had to ask, if not for the sand dunes or the berms that were put up, where would these crocodiles be hatching? And I was told probably a combination of homes, hotels, and private beaches, not exactly the place you want to be finding American crocodiles oh, hatching, yeah. though we do want to see the population thriving, obviously. Another point here, a key piece of gear that I figured I would just show you that you need if you're going to come out here to find crocodile hatchlings is this bug net for obvious reasons. It was about 95 degrees with, Ooh. I don't know, an 80% dew point when we were out Ooh. here. And also, the mama crocodile, ah. where is she the whole time? I am told that she likes to kind of stay in the distance, in the water, keep an eye on things, see how it's all unfolding, but rarely intervenes, A, because they're afraid of people, and B, because she likes a hands-off approach <laughs> when this is all going on after the babies have been birthed. Mm. So I that put my mind a little bit at ease. Uh -huh. Before Al even says this, I am aware that Brock rhymes with Croc. So I very well might be a Croc by Croc. I was going to resist. Sorry to take your edition. It's graphic. Darn it. Brock the Croc. Yeah. Maybe the mom was afraid of that mesh outfit you're wearing. <laughs> yeah. That's why she kept very the distance, good that. Sam. I hope not. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Oh, We're gonna Madonna wore that guys. in the borderline. <laughs> I know, totally. totally. <laughs> It's true. With all the bracelets. I know. I knew I recognized that. Oh. Guys, we're going to put more animal babies in the spotlight <laughs> tomorrow as we continue our series today in the wild. Love it. We are back. It's 836. We've got a fun trend in travel to tell you about. So apparently this summer, a lot of folks are heading out far and wide to get lost, but they're trying to get lost on purpose. <laughs> it's maze craze, apparently. So we sent NBC's Kelly Cobier to check it out. Guys, good morning. Well, some people are basing their entire vacations around finding their way through the confusing twists and turns of these life-size puzzles. Some of them centuries old. I think I'll try this way. From the grand old gardens in England, to the ancient catacombs below Paris, to the emerald oasis in Singapore's airport, it seems every city has a maze. And a flood of visitors. So we're just walking in circles so far. We've reached the same spot multiple times. Yeah. Dead end, right? Oh no, that's a dead end who will pay to get lost. Ah! What is that? How much was a goal? No one understands the allure better than Adrian Fisher, known as the master of mazes. He's designed them for British gardens, American cornfields, even on a skyscraper in Dubai. More than 700 mazes in 43 countries on six continents of all sizes and shapes with one goal. Yes, it, it's, um, it's like a game of chess, except I have to pay all my moves first. I want you to win just before you've had enough. And then you feel very good about yourself. Fisher even helped start the maze craze in the U.S., designing what he says was the world's first corn maze 
in Lebanon, Pennsylvania, at the time the biggest in the world, but not for long. The biggest one I ever did was a corn maze in southern England, which was 19 acres and nine and a half miles of paths. Nine and a half miles of paths. Mm. And 60% of the people who went in solved the whole thing. They, what happened to the they other They were 40? determined to do it. <laughs> so if you're really desperate, you know, who can wave for help. They can be terrifying, like in The Shining. Periculum! And magical in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Mazes have been part of human culture for centuries. It's in our genes. It's a painful experience at the moment, but we know at the end, if we're able to solve the maze, we get a pleasure or a doping spike or a pleasure sensation. And that's what keeps us going back to something like that. Fisher has another explanation. You're getting back to the eternal truths of families and relationships and you leave your telephones and you go and do something together. With that in mind, I set off to solve my very first maze in Fisher's backyard. What I really need is your view. Any maze master worth their medal will tell you using a drone is cheating. Oh, that's not good. After a few wrong turns, Oh, what was that? <laughs> ah, made it. The reward, a gorgeous oh. view. And as the sun sets, the relief of knowing I won't be lost here all night. This maze only took me a couple of minutes, but closer to home, there's the Great Vermont Corn Maze, described as 24 acres of corn fusion. And if you try it, be prepared to be lost for at least two to three hours. Oh, Guys. Who wants to do that? Wow. Two to three yeah. hours. Oh, wow. I need that payoff to be at Chili's. Yeah, three something like that. Something like that. Know, okay. <laughs> you, you know you're in no. trouble when you walk by and there's skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> Nine miles. Um, cool. Well, that's one way to crack the boredom, but okay. a little closer to home, oh, the kids right. are like, I'm bored, I'm yeah. hungry, I want mm -hmm. snacks. We have some solutions for you, including how to bring the excitement of the movies oh. right to your own backyard. Some great ideas just ahead, but first, this is today on NBC. We are back with Shop This List today. Guys, we need this. We're in the thick of the dog days of summer. And if your family, your kids are starting to get a little restless, this week's, <laughs> this 
or your co-anchor. This week's list features boredom busters for all ages. We've got Erica Domasek here. She's a DIY expert. She's the author of P.S. We made this with lots of great ideas. And don't forget, you can scan the QR code. You can get everything in your cart with just one click today. Hi, Erica. Good morning. Hi, Erica. Hi, guys. We Thanks have a lot of kids, me. and we hear I'm yeah, bored constantly too a much. lot. So hopefully this will uh, I am here to save help. the day because we have a lot of summer left, believe it or not. Yeah. And parents are always like, I heard you say, you know, go in the jar. Yeah. This is easy stuff. Let's start off with the lemonades. Classic. Okay, you this know, is cute. This is cute. Everything you see here is from Target. These are some of my favorite picks that you can find on today.com. But this right here is a lemonade stand. Mm -hmm. You can pop up in minutes. Okay. And I know everybody loves a lemonade stand. I like to upgrade it. In yes. my book, you will find the unicorn lemonade Ooh. recipe. So it's a like regular lemonade, yes. but not so much because it's mixed with butterfly pea. Mm -hmm. We did this a little earlier, but it will have an ombre color. It's mm. super fun. Oh, it you'll, tastes good too. You'll get extra tips with a unicorn. Corn lemonade. Okay. Did you build so, this little um, stand here so too? So this easy to make? stand is so easy to make. It pops up in seconds. Yeah. The best part is it actually goes flat too, so you can okay. store it for next season. You could do it outside. You could do it inside. What's the going rate for Delicious. for lemonade right now? Twenty-five cents. I mean, depends on where you live. I live in I live in Los Angeles, so don't oh, ask forget me. It. You know. Oh God. Uh, what do your kids charge? Oh, they get like ten bucks. No, oh, stop. Ridiculous. But this can hold up to Stupid. thirty pounds. Okay, it's amazing. Really, cool. really Personalize cute. Personalize it with a name. Make it super Love cute. It. Okay. What are we making here? Okay, Ice now. Cream, so, Listen, it is the summer. It is hot, especially in New York, everywhere. It's all about staying cool. This will blow your mind, okay? This is the Yonana Soft Serve Maker. Mm. You need one ingredient. Frozen fr fruit. That's really? it. Really? Yes, I promise. See this? This is a soft serve made only with frozen How do you fruit. Do you it? Ice or milk N or nothing. Anything. So all you do is you literally take your frozen fruit, yes. right, and you stick it in here. Yes. Push it through, so and it will. Great. I'm can't be that easy. It is. This would be we so did great it right for entertaining too. Well, it's great to do with kids. I have a four and a half year old. Mm -hmm. We go in the kitchen, mm -hmm. and the more you get your kids in the kitchen and get them involved, you guys know. Yes. Yeah. They want to get involved. They want to eat. You don't feel bad because it's healthy. It's nutritious. It really is. You know, and I love this because you can also add toppings. Can you do in. more than one type of fruit? Do whatever you like. I think Hoda has bananas. this. I think she's really into this. I love, still do your toppings, but okay. it's, it's delicious. I'm impressed with this. All right, what's next? Okay. Now, listen, I have DIY in my DNA, so arts and crafts <laughs> are my things. Mm -hmm. This is from, the Target's line is Mondo Lava. Yeah. All the kits here are so affordable. You can pack them up, take them on a road trip. This this one here is their sun print kit. They have everything you need here. Paper, stencils, you take them out in the sun, mm -hmm. put your stencils on there, and all you need is a little UV ray and you've got artwork. Oh, wow. So you just put the stencils how you yeah. like and lay it out and in the sun. And they're reusable, each stencil. Well, you're gonna, the stencils are reusable, papers are not, so you tell your right. kids, go outside, you need an activity? All right, oh, go great. do some artwork. That's cute, and not too hard, because sometimes I know you have DIY yeah. in your DNA. Yeah, but this is I the have point. I UMB in my DNA. Oh, yeah, stop it, this is the point. Anyone can do this. Yeah. Speaking about anyone, this is my thing, because it brings me back to my childhood, little lanterns. Aww. This kit comes with everything you need to make a cute little lantern. Now, for a lot of art, Lars and Crafts projects, yeah. you know, you're like, what am I going to do with it next? Use it as a nightlight, take it outside for a lantern. Beautiful. That That's one's fun. cute. Tie dye kit. Making, classic. I mean, this one is Easy. very, it, this is like an oldie but a goodie. Tie dye, everything you need here. I love this kit because it's pastels, yes. and that's my vibe. But everything you need here, and it even comes with the gloves and a tarp suit and get dirty. So. Okay, I was going to say, I worry about a mess with something like that. Well, but the thing about it, guys. take your stained t shirts, use yes. that kit, and I then see beer. cover Stains it up. Are gone. Ooh, I almost just tripped. Okay. All now, right. what's this? So, if you are a family who likes an outdoor adventure, movie night is for you. Mm -hmm. You need a couple things. Now, this is the Vanco mini projector. It's actually on sale for $69.99, which is a massive deal right now. Mm -hmm. All you need is Wi-Fi, and you're good to go. Okay. The hardest part is probably choosing which movie you're going to watch. And wait, do you need a screen? What, what so, are you doing? So as far as the screen goes, put up a sheet, use your garage door, get creative. Yeah. Speaking about getting creative, you're already in there. These are my favorite loungers. They hold up to 450 pounds. Wow. You want is to be he cozy. sitting in it, right? I mean, do, or is it supposed to be like you canoe you. style? You do you're you. DIY, you I'm do you. DIY, I'm BYOB. Oh, geez, did you hear it almost popped? But while you're sitting down, you can relax, watch your movie. Yes. You can even have snacks. If you're going to do movie night, have snacks. This can seems you like do such a good idea, the, the outdoor movie night. I will start the s'mores. This is from Sharper Image. It's the best 
tabletop electric s'mores maker. Why I love it is because <laughs> it is so easy to do. It comes with everything. You've got all your bits and pieces. It's well, electric. It's safe for kids. No, you know, no fires, awesome. no gas. It's perfect. It's really cute, Erica. Th thank you. This is all about summer right here, guys. Thank you. You Carson, nailed it. Try to go hot dog way. I'm you know, not. I don't I'm no longer bored. The back support. Then I can't see you. I can't conversate okay. outside <laughs> before the movie starts. <laughs> Erica, we're thank watching you Oppenheimer so much. tonight. Oh my gosh, Savannah. amazing. Good. Let me get my pillow. It's a long one, uh, like, but a great movie. Scan the QR code or head to today.com. You can shop this Thank whole you, list. Erica. Of course. One click if you want. Today earns a commission from purchases made through our links. Hoda. All right, guys, get ready. You ready this to have your minds blown? The pop magician, Antonio Diaz, brought his awe-inspiring act to the plaza. See these people behind me? Somebody's going to disappear. But first, this is today <laughs> on NBC. All right, this is a good one, guys. We're back on the plaza adding some magic to your Monday because we're lucky enough to have one of the biggest acts in Europe with us right here on the plaza about to make his Broadway debut. The world knows him as El Mago Pop Antonio Diaz. Good morning. You're huge in Europe. Millions of people have seen your show. Are you excited for the Broadway debut? I'm really excited. It means the world to me. Uh, being on Broadway is my dream. Um, very few magicians in history have been on Broadway uh, doing their show, and being one of them is a privilege. Well, this is going to be something special. We got a, You've picked a lot of people from our plaza, and you're going to do a magic trick. All the people behind were just randomly selected from the plaza, and they are a little bit nervous. Should they be nervous? Yes, you should. <laughs> oh, oh, no! Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so what is going to happen right now? <laughs> well, the thing is that b before to do this, I, I want to make it very clear that the people who are going to participate is chosen randomly. Randomly? Yeah. Yes. Are you guys really? randomly selected? Yes. Randomly yes. selected. They don't know why they're here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we have 24 people. Yes. And you're going to choose four of them. Only four of you are going to yes. participate. You have to to to. Uh, spin. Yeah, spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the okay. wheel. Oh my, are, okay, do you guys want to get chosen or not? Spin the wheel. Here we go. Spin Let's it. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, I'll let you what number. Oh. We're going to choose one, one color. There are one six color. colors. Okay. Six, six colors. colors. Okay. You're going to choose well, one Here we go. Here we go. It's going to stop. Black, black, red, yellow, green, blue, orange, orange black. Black. Black, center. black is going. Black. Black. Uh, okay, wow. Wow. okay. Come with me, come with me. Come. Are you happy you were selected? <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah. You ready? Is it your last days on Earth? <laughs> okay. We'll All right, out. guys. Okay, tell us what you want them to do. Okay, I want to do something with you. Okay, uh, come with me and go with my assistant. Please go with my assistant. Because okay. we're going to do What's something happening? unforgettable here. Okay. okay. What's going to happen? Uh, you'll see. What you're about to see, you will. Are they going to disappear? What's going on? Watch. Is there water Come involved? Me, please. What's get happening? Get on this platform. Oh! And they're going to give you a blindfold. Get on this platform, please. Well, it's a clear get on box. this platform. So we can see everything. They're okay. going to give you a blindfold. Perfect. 
Are you excited? Is it sturdy? Yeah, yeah. It's you just... sure it's sturdy? <laughs> yes. Okay, he okay. says it's sturdy. I want you to put your hands like this on the glass. Put your hands like this. Perfect. And now put on your blindfold, please. Put on to, your blindfold. To keep, Blindfolds. To keep the secret safe. Put on your blindfold. Perfect. This looks like a carnival ride. <laughs> okay. Put, perfect. Put you guys your fine? Hands. Everybody good? Thumbs put up. Put your hands on the glass, please. Put your hands on the glass. We're Perfect. Here. There's no funky stuff going and on. And don't this move, is... no matter what happened. Don't move. Even if you feel that you've been touched, even if you feel anything. Don't, don't move. move. Because, ladies and gentlemen, what's going to happen? Here we go. Come with me. Okay. Come with me. Live from New York, from Rockefeller Plaza, surrounded by people from all over the world. Let's do this. Oh, wow. Did you see this one? There's one over here that's empty. Yeah. Okay. Our friends are spinning in this one as they walk in. Oh! There's no way they're gonna end up over there. One! No way, right? Two! No way. Three! Five feet from that. No! Oh. That's insane! We're right here! What? That was incredible. You can put off, off your blindfold. Put off, put off your blindfold. Pull off your mask, everybody. You've How do you moved. feel? <laughs> you move. You guys okay? You're not in the same one you went in. You can take off your blindfold. <laughs> that was incredible, Hoda. For people at Come home, on, let's give them they a just round of magically appeared. Yeah. And the other one, in two seconds. <laughs> How many magicians have we had on this show? <laughs> I'm so shocked right I've never now. Seen anything like I cannot really? tell you. Thank you. Oh my Can God, that one was right amazing. Can I go in that one again? Whoa! That was that was a mind blower. Like the Bahamas. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. Do you understand now why Antonio is the first real comedian on Broadway? I can't imagine your show. It makes total sense. Are you all blown away? I mean, you do that. Here, Cars. I'm racking my brain to figure out how you did that. They I know. in that one, and now they're in yeah. this one. That was pretty crazy. Oh. You're unbelievable. I don't know how you did it, but um, we have a lot of witnesses who are shocked. Yeah. Very confused. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody know how that yeah. was done? Are you all totally shocked? <laughs> they were right. What happened? We have no idea. <laughs> nobody, nobody knows. And it was suspended in the air. Okay, anyway, you're amazing. Thank wow. you, Antonio. Wow, Antonio, how cool. Yeah, you can catch him on Broadway. Ooh. Tickets for El Mago Pop on sale right now. Impressive. All right, we're back with our third and fourth hours, but first, y'all, this is Today on NBC. Right, so how'd you do it? Tell us how you do it. <laughs> wow. Tell us how. I don't want to know how. I like the feeling. Watch the walk Watch it. Everybody, good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, it worth coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The miracle. The miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today.
This morning on the third hour of today, we're going to need a bigger boat. Incredible video of a bull shark attacking a boat in Florida. We've got the story behind this scary scene. Then, Ronnie James Road to Recovery. The new update from Dad LeBron as his son is spotted out for the first time one week after suffering cardiac arrest. Plus, summer travel savings. We're going to help you plan smarter with everything from luggage delivery to vacation clothing rentals. And we've got some serious star power. August's hottest new movies and TV in What to Watch. Today, Monday, July 31st, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. And a good Monday morning. Welcome to this third hour. Beautiful summer Perfect. morning. Perfect. Perfect. July. Yeah. Craig Melvin, Al Roker, Chanel is off. But look who's back. I All right. made it back. Good try. Yes. Hey now. What about your luggage? Did My luggage did not make it back, but I have successfully made it back. Um, How was it? It was it was absolutely magical. My um, in-laws, Brian's parents, have been wanting to take the whole family to Sicily for a long time. There's a Mount Fischera out oh. there. We didn't actually go see it, but we did go to Sicily with that's all the Fischeras, the whole gang. Um, I'm wearing the same clothes I wore that I flew in. So that, and that's, Brian's still hugging you. <laughs> yes, I did find a washer dryer, though. Oh, um, but it was oh. just so sweet to have the boys. You know, a lot of, it, a lot of times it's kind of tough to traveling with three kids, but when you have all the extra hands, you know, aunts and uncles, grandparents, um, you know, we toured Mount Etna. We were just in these little towns. This is a town called Shaka that we went to um, out, outside of Palermo. So it, it was just, it was just absolutely incredible. Like so nice. this is Friday. No, yes, Friday we took off. We had an overnight flight, wearing clothes happily, you know, yeah. just about to go on vacation, not right. realizing our luggage would never show up on vacation. And yet still had a marvelous time. And still time. had a great time. Um, I, I do hope you get your bags back at some point. Everybody did except for me. So 13 bags have now been found. <laughs> Mine is sitting somewhere. If anyone knows anyone that works at Catania Airport, who had a fi which had a fire two no, weeks ago, some, so there's no computer I saw, system. I saw a couple of airport workers wearing your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> in Italy, which is in Italy, and their so. kids look fantastic. Yes. Good to have them back. How it's was your nice weekend? I had a great week. It's just very low key, you know. Uh, I got to spend some more time with little Sky Clara. I uh, love she's these just, pictures. Uh, I literally two hours yesterday just. Went right by. Oh. Uh, Courtney and Wes were able to get a shower, take a little nap, and so that was good. She's, oh just, she's such a little mush. Oh. You know, and, I love uh, those little hand gloves. Yes. Yeah, their so nails they are like little razor blades. They, they really are. And then Leela's been here for the last couple of oh. weeks, and now we, we uh, had lunch with her on Saturday and then took her to the airport and mm -hmm. drove her to the airport and uh, dropped her off, and she went oh back, to, back to Paris. And then last night, uh, Nick and I, just it was just the boys, and we uh, had dinner last night. The, uh, the back, Ooh, back, nice. back Yesterday yard, was ab about as perfect weather-wise as you can get. Spectacular. Yeah. Northeast. Spectacular. How about you? Uh, like, it's always a blur the weekend. <laughs> yeah, small well, that's a good weekend. Oh, pool. Yeah. We spent some time. Uh, there There they are. Uh, I liked your post. Simple. What you said. I love them when they love each other. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Those moments capture them. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we took the picture. Yeah. That's why we took the picture. Two seconds, two uh, seconds later, everyone's crying. After uh, church yesterday, we couldn't uh -huh. find Sybil. And Lindsay went, went around and, and, and found her in a tree. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look, at she really looks older there. Uh -huh. And I feel bad with that kid in the background moving so fast. <laughs> it was like her face was... I didn't, get, didn't, get I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to ask my, my church. <laughs> but, yes, so um, hopefully your weekend was delightful as well. Um, want to do some headlines? Sure. All right. All let's right. do some headlines. Uh, we're going to start with a, this, a scene that really could be straight out of Jaws. Amazing. Folks. This drone capturing this... Pretty remarkable video of a bull shark attacking a fishing boat. This is off the coast of Jeez. Florida. Wow. What's underneath? Oh, He's got under the boat. the boat. He went right under the boat. Gotta oh, my goodness. NBC's Gotti Schwartz is in Los Angeles with the story behind that incredible video. I, got, I mean, the shark just looks angry. Yeah. Incredible, yeah, terrifying. This is eerily similar to that famous unforgettable Jaws scene, only this time the boat was big enough, but after hearing from the fishermen on the boat, we are very glad no one was hurt. Engines. This stunning scene happening off the coast of South Florida, a bull shark repeatedly launching itself at a fisherman's boat. And all of a sudden, something switched in the shark's brain, and he just went into full attack mode. Video producer and fishing guide Josh Jorgensen had been following a school of fish with his drone when he caught the shark battering his friend's boat. And he just went at 
completely nuts and just start attacking the engines and just ripping them to pieces. Fishing boat captain Carl Torreson said he couldn't believe how much damage the shark caused. I didn't think a shark could actually shake the boat like that. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This is like a ride from Universal Studios. Oh! In May, a similar incident captured off the coast of Oahu. Tiger shark ran me. Kayak fisherman Scott Haraguchi rammed by a 10 to 12 foot tiger shark. It's miraculous that I didn't get knocked over. While in Florida, the shark bite capital of the nation, a recent string of attacks leading to alerts and beach closures. Looks like we got a hammerhead shark. A 12 year old girl bitten on the leg while swimming at Cocoa Beach. It hurts like incredibly bad. It was really, really painful and I just wasn't expecting it. But unprovoked shark attacks are rare and fatalities even more so. Researchers at Cal State Long Beach spent two years filming California beaches where great whites hang out and learn they come close to swimmers and surfers almost daily without humans even knowing. I think most people's conception of what a shark, a white shark is, is that if you see it in the water, it's going to bite you. And I think one of the things our study showed is that's simply not true. Even bull sharks, known to be more aggressive, don't usually charge like this. When they do, it can look like something out of the movies. I know this sounds insane, but that scene in Jaws where it jumps on the back of the boat, that is totally possible. Yikes. There have been about 50 shark attacks worldwide this year so far. Experts say while the total number of shark bites may have risen somewhat since its low point back in the 1970s, 1980s, the rate of attacks has remained the same for decades. So in other words, do not be afraid to go swimming. Apparently, the, the, the chances of getting bit by a shark are one in 3.75 million. Oh, oh yes. Unless you get bit, then yeah. it's 100%. And, and there's yeah, and there's, so, uh, there's still saying. that chance. Right. So I'm just Gonna... You say there's a chance. Yes, you're saying there's a chance, Scotty. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Scotty. Well, sure. turning now to an encouraging update this morning about Bronny James, exactly one week after he suffered that cardiac arrest. Over the weekend, Bronny's dad, NBA superstar LeBron James, shared how his son is doing on social media. NBC's Kaylee Hartung has been covering the story for us, has an update now. So, Kaylee, we're seeing the first pictures of Bronny out of the hospital. What more do we know about how he's doing? Yeah, when you see this, it's hard to believe that it was just a week ago that he collapsed as his heart stopped on the basketball court. But look at this. Over the weekend, LeBron tweeted this video of his son, quite the talent on the piano we now know, with the caption, God is great, Bronny, you are amazing. And we also saw the James family head out for dinner together here in Los Angeles. Paparazzi conked them at the celebrity hotspot, Giorgio Baldi's, one of my personal favorites. But guys, these are all such hopeful signs of Bronny's recovery to the point that one doctor who didn't treat Bronny, he told us that this rebound suggests that Bronny got CPR and defibrillated almost immediately, like within tens of seconds after he collapsed by the USC staff. So really encouraging signs here, guys. But Kaylee, that is interesting. You know, d despite this rise in cardiac arrest, you, there are only seven states that actually require CPR training and keeping those AEDs close to the gym. Like, d do we expect that's going to change? Well, there's a Big push right now, potentially life-saving legislation that's been introduced in Congress. There's this bipartisan bill that if it's passed, it would give schools grant money to buy and maintain defibrillators and provide training to students and staff. I think Bronny's incident has put a spotlight on the fact that sudden cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death for student athletes. Mm -hmm. And the chances of survival decrease between 7 and 10 percent every minute that CPR is delayed. So mm -hmm. having the resources and the training to make sure kids can get the immediate care that they need, just like Bronny did, can make all of the difference. And Damar Hamlin, who we saw collapse on that field during an NFL game last year, you know, he's really backing this legislation, too, guys. All right. Uh, Kaylee, hard time. Kaylee, thank you. Yeah, it seems like a no-brainer. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. If there's something Congress could pass, right. yeah, it would that, seem that like would be it could be one. this one. Yes. Yeah, anyway. Okay, thanks so much, Kelly. Up next, not too late to book a summer getaway. We've got the insider tips. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, 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 I like see that. See that graphic over that? Sorry, I got distracted. That's, that's really <laughs> No, I thought the same thing. I just wasn't oh, going to say it. That's really nice. <laughs> like the squeeze back? Uh, insider out. tips to help you save by traveling smarter. Then later, AI life hacks. You know, you could always watch the pre-broadcast. Uh, sure, like how this. artificial Kinda intelligence waited. could make your daily routine a little easier. <laughs> oh, can I get uh, so. Third hour today. You need to take a trip right now. <laughs> Third hour today. I'll be right back. <laughs>
this morning in our series, Consumer Confidential, we are helping you travel smarter and cheaper. Yeah, the summer may be flying by, but you can still snack a great deal on some last minute getaways, folks. So here with some strategies to save, CNBC's Seema Modi, welcome back. Thank you for having me. It's, it's really hard to think about the fact that it's the last day of July already. <laughs> it feels like summer just flies. So folks, do want to try to get away maybe one last time before summer's over? Tell us about these travel deals. How do we find them? Yeah, well, good news, Craig, is that it's still not too late to find a summer deal. Flights, hotels, car rental prices have all come down. Oh. Airfare specifically down 17% from the same time a year ago, according to Hopper. Right. Experts say if you're looking to find a good deal, use apps like Kayak, Google, and Expedia to set those price alerts. Expedia specifically now using artificial intelligence uh -oh. as a way to speed up the booking process. But let's also talk hotels. Yeah. Prices have come down considerably in the last month. Here's what we did. We worked with CoStar to find beachy destinations across the nation that mm -hmm. will only cost $200 or less a night. Hmm. On our list is Myrtle Beach, oh, yeah. San Diego. The Grand Strand, Myrtle ah. Beach. And Florida Panhandle. Yeah. Not bad. Uh, not bad at all. All under 200, 200 all under less. Two. And then there's car rentals, which we know. Also down. Prices surged during the pandemic because of a shortage of inventory. Now they're finally moving lower by 12 to 15% compared to the same time last year. And it probably helps the gas prices are down as well too, right? Yes, a little bit. So now that the trip is booked, mm. let's talk about luggage. Um, how do I save there? <laughs> Well, as we don't know, don't bring any. It's becoming a huge source. Yeah, it's becoming a huge source. It's a long anxiety. story. She lost all of her bags. No, I heard. Yeah. I heard. It's becoming a big concern for so many mm -hmm. Americans who are traveling right now. Here's one option: just skip the check-in process I altogether. Did that. I, a couple weeks ago, we went down the Hilton Head in South Carolina. I shipped a couple, bunch of our bags days before. There are companies like Luglist.com that will charge you as little as forty dollars per bag, and it can be a very convenient option. Similarly, Craig, you can also rent your clothes using a clothing rental service. Mm. A friend of mine recently did this for a bachelorette weekend. Instead of squishing three big dresses into a carry-on, mm. she picked three outfits online, yeah. sent it to her hotel mm. at the end of the weekend, shipped them back, and packed light. Huh. That's another I've idea. never heard of that. Yeah. Okay. There's a reason. However. <laughs> you wouldn't do it, huh? No. Not on a bet. <laughs> my problem, I rented three dresses that are in my luggage that's lost, <laughs> so now I have to buy the three dresses I didn't even get to wear. Oh. Gate, that's gate check thing. for free. This is, you, Roker swears by this one. If you don't have to check a bag, don't check a bag. Never. Don't check a bag, really. Never. If you can avoid it, that's great. And if you are, check, if you are uh, traveling with bulky bags, Think about curbside. One of the big perks here, according to Scott Keys at Going.com, the curbside agent tends to be a bit more flexible, doesn't always check the weight of the bag. Uh -oh. So if you're traveling with luggage that is one to two pounds over, consider curbside. That may be one way to avoid that Ooh, up to $100 and slip a dollar yeah. overweight fee. Yes, exactly. Um, okay, so I, I didn't get into the fact I was also delayed coming back home from my trip too. But you say the lounge is actually a good place to hang out. Yeah, TBG says if your flight is delayed, go straight to the lounge even if it will cost you $50 and here's why Dylan lounge agents tend to have a bit more experience mm -hmm. so they can have can provide you and your family better customer service once you're in the lounge load up on the complimentary food and drinks instead of spending $7 mm -hmm. on a bottled water at the store next to the gate and when we're talking access look at your credit cards like American Express and Chase that are building exclusive lounges at different airports mm -hmm. there's also Capital One that offers Friday uh, priority pass membership as well. Okay, so let's say you're finally on the plane. How yes. can we actually improve our onboard experience? Well, wouldn't it be nice, Dylan, if you could uh, offer a nicer seat to your partner? One thing people don't realize, there are airlines like Spirit that will launch auctions for premium seats hmm. leading up to the flight. And experts we spoke to say it'll only take 20 to $30 in some cases to win that auction. Oh. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then again, your airline credit card. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you want to use that when you're on board to buy food and drinks. Alaska Air will actually give you cash back. Oh, wow. That's great. In fact, right. uh, Delta, on, uh, if you're a SkyMiles member, you get free Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi, exactly. That's, okay, so you land no luggage. and you're going to the hotel. How do you try to get that upgrade mm. going? Well, even before you get to the hotel, uh -huh. Al, experts recommend putting a note in your reservation telling them why this trip is special. Oh. On a birthday, mm -hmm. an anniversary. You could just make it up too if you <laughs> okay craig let's not game Whatever. the system <laughs> it may be and this is why good things don't exist okay okay so that's one option 
This is also a good time, Al, to lean into technology. Mm -hmm. So download the ha hotel app to speed up the check-in and check-out process. Right. And here's my favorite one, that pesky resort fee. You and I have discussed oh, sure. this before. Yep. Ask the concierge what it covers. Sometimes they will include a complimentary drink, or mm. if you're not drinking like me right now, <laughs> maybe it's ask them if there's another perk that they can offer. Use it for like food or something like that. Appetizer, a dessert, access to a beach chair. So there's ways to get and, around it. And be yeah. nice to the clerks. Uh, a smile goes a long way. Yeah, yeah, as always. This is a hard time not just for customers, but for the industry. That's true. Well. Thank you, CNBC. Thank you so much. Modi. Thank you, thank you. Uh, coming up next, it's the technology that has everyone talking these days. We were just talking about this yesterday at church. Mm -hmm. uh, artificial intelligence. Our tech guru, Jacob Ward, he is here to show us some easy ways to use AI for everything from cooking to getting dressed every day. In fact, your pastor was a bot. <laughs> Then a little bit later, and what to watch? We've got the newest comedies that are hitting theaters and streaming this August. Third hour of today with our fancy new graphics right back after this. So we've all heard about AI, chat, GPT, and other programs that claim to make our lives easier. AI that can pick out your clothes or even help you make dinner. But how do we know? <laughs> how does it actually work? I don't know. Well, here with everything we need to know is NBC News technology correspondent Jacob Ward. Jake, good morning. Hi, you guys. Good morning. Hey, Jake, so everyday AI. Right. I mean, there, it's out there. What are the things that we can go to to help us in our day-to-day -day chores? Yeah, so many people are asking me these days, you know, what is it? How does it work? How will it affect my life? And I think one of the ways that you can experiment with whether or not you want to let it into your life is to experiment with just, you know, the, the easy stuff, mm -hmm. right? And so you have sites already like like, let's say, uh, letsfoodie.com, which mm -hmm. is basically a, a, an app that allows you to upload everything that's in your fridge, okay. the oh. list of everything you've got, and it says, here, boom, here's your, you know, 30 different options from the what you oh, thought wow. was a barren Ooh. cupboard, but in fact can, you know, work it all out for you. I had that idea back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> this is the thing about AI. <laughs> Lots of people are just you know, being like, oh, I should have, oh, well. So uh, another one, Pronti is another uh, one, and this is one that, that will do the same kind of thing, but with everything you wear, right? So mm. you oh. have to take the time to upload everything, pictures of everything in your closet, but awesome. then it'll say, okay, today is a good day to, you know, uh, put these two items together, mm. these four items together, and wow. here's your outfit. And it's not know, a human doing this. It's not a human doing wow. this. It's all just pattern recognition, which is the essence of AI. So these uh -huh. are the sorts of, you know, easy, quick ways that you could bring it into your life, mm -hmm. let it organize your data, your food and your clothes and see what happens. What about bedtime stories? Well, so this is another crazy thing, right? Is a few months ago, we did the story of the very first person to put it together doing that kind of thing. But, you know, here is one of these apps. This one's called bedtimestory.ai. I've got it on my phone right here. Uh -huh. You can create a story, and in it, you know, I can put in, a, you know, young meteorologist. <laughs> That's a tough word. Right? Oh, geez, this is terrible. On live TV. Young meteorologist <laughs> goes on a journey and it will just generate a story. It starts what? thinking it through and goes, okay, let One me minute, one second, be right with you. Here comes the title is gonna be, oh, why don't we say, oh, we'll say a meteorologist's journey, adventures of a young weatherman. Wow. And then off comes wow. all of this. Once village. upon a time in a quaint little village. Oh, Oliver. Little Oliver. Oliver, I like oh. that. And then it starts to come up with the artwork. From an early age, he had an unusual oh, fascination my. with the sky and everything wow. it held. And you know, up will come the artwork, the plot, the rest of it. People were just playing around with this in college dorm mm -hmm. rooms, you know, 
computer mm -hmm. science people, but they are becoming full-fledged companies. Oh my goodness! Now. And you said there's a website that's live, like Wikipedia. There's, there's the art. Oh, there's the yeah, picture. Yeah, that's right. That. That's right. So wow. there's the picture now. So that's right. So Craig, you were saying, you know, that, so there is a sort of there's the higher level. If you really want to play around with like how this thing might guide you in the sorts of decisions you make, there are, are places like Perplexity.ai. This is a it's like a, a search engine that you're supposed to be able to converse with. You go back and forth with, and so you can ask questions like, you know, what's a specific daily workout plan for a man in his 40s? This is highly hypothetical, right? But that's me. <laughs> and bang, it'll it'll not only bang out, you know, the full workout oh. for you. It also, and I think this is an important part of this, will footnote its sources because most of these sites right now, the Chat GPTs and the Bards and the Bing's, all of these things, they don't necessarily tell you where they're finding their information, mm -hmm. but you can very quickly know. Okay, this is verified stuff. Now, this won't work on current events. Uh -huh. These models take years to be trained, and so it can't tell you where to get Taylor Swift tickets right now, yeah. but it can tell you all about her musical influences, you know, yeah. or what other artists from a couple years ago you might have enjoyed that were like her. I feel like when I type things into Google and I don't find what I want right away, I kind of reword it and change it up a little bit. I mean, yes. what's the best way to... like? Ask this is exactly right. You have to be very, very specific with AI, especially something like ChatGPT or Perplexity. And so, you know, you, you, it's really good to, you know, do something like, uh, you know, ask it, you know, treat me like a five-year-old and explain climate change to oh. me, right? Don't just say, what's climate change? Right. You know, make it very, very specific because this system is entirely pattern based it, it doesn't you know again it's important to know right this thing doesn't know anything about climate change it only knows what the internet has said about climate change uh. so you have to narrow it down and ask it very specifically not just you know how do i be mindful with my kids mm -hmm. but what's five specific daily activities i can do to be mindful with my, oh my kids goodness. you know so these kinds of things help it zero in on real answers that'll be helpful to you there are all these platforms that are gathering information about us when yes. we put do these platforms do the same oh, thing? Oh, yes, absolutely, <laughs> because that's the bargain, right? The reason this is free, and this is what everybody is always pointing out, and it's important to remember, right? If the thing is free, you are the product. And so in this oh. case, by putting your information into these sites, you are teaching them more and more, sometimes about you specifically, depending on the company, sometimes just in general about humanity. We are definitely, there's a bargain going I, on here. I think you should repeat that one more time for the folks in the back. Yeah. If, if it's free. If it's free, you are the product. So yes. usually, so you usually know. say, if it's free, it's for me. That's true. <laughs> yeah, well, Two things can be true. Greg Melvin is the product, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Wow. You're you really fascinating. Thank you. Always learn something when you're around. Appreciate Absolutely. It. It's scary, though. Okay. Well, coming yes. up, August is a busy month for action movies, some serious star power. We're going to reveal the top picks for the whole family. Then later on this Motivational Monday, why one expert says you need to get rid of the to-do list to become even more productive. Just mm. give it to AI. Third <laughs> hour of today, I'll be right back. I can clean my house. Welcome back. So it's a little toasty outside, but we're going to keep cool on this Monday morning with the best shows and movies to check out in August. Here to give us a preview, NBC News entertainment contributor Chris Witherspoon, also the founder and CEO of the entertainment app 
Pop viewers. Chris, Chris good to see you. Welcome back. Guys. All Thank good. You. So, of course, before we get into this, we, yes. we've got to acknowledge the, uh, the uh, WGA, SAG after unions, still on strike. So what's the latest with negotiations? And what's that going to mean going forward into the fall as far as movies yeah. and television? Yeah. So we're at day, day 91 for the writer's strike, day 18 for SAG after. And there's really at a standstill right now. I'm curious to, to hear what Fran Drescher says when, she, mm -hmm. when you have her on the show. But we have big stars who are out uh, picketing right now, people like Kerry Washington, uh, Julianne Moore, Brian Cranston. Uh, and I think what you're going to see is a lot of shows and films that are coming out. You won't have any press going with it. Mm -hmm. right. So today I'm talking about a lot of great content. Listen in, because I'm the star right now. <laughs> There's some stars that can come out and do any press. Sure. Mm -hmm. And we probably will see a bottleneck of, or, or like a, a lack of good content mm -hmm. coming out probably Q1 of next year if the strike continues. Well, there we, won't be as many shows and films. We have to read this. Uh, Comcast, which owns our parent company, uh, NBC Universal, is one of the entertainment companies represented by the Alliance of Motion Picture and television producers and some news group employees are represented by SAG after and the WGA and as you mentioned we are going to have uh, a Fran Drescher yeah. here tomorrow yeah it's, it, and as we're having this conversation in my sight line I can actually see some of the, oh, wow. some of the strike wow. the average right. actor makes twenty seven thousand dollars a year uh, let's talk about some of the content uh, yes. that is coming out this fall I uh, got caught up over the weekend on one of my favorite shows only murders in the building <laughs> season three yes. about to drop and they've got a huge star about to join the cast. Okay, yes, but the, the OG cast is back. Selena Gomez, uh, Martin Short, Steve Martin, and they're back solving crimes. If you watch the first two seasons, all the crimes took place in their building. Yeah. This time, the, the murder happens on a stage, on a Broadway stage, but you mentioned some great stars. Paul Rudd, Meryl Streep, I watched this last night too, Craig. She steals every single scene that she is in. Jesse Williams, Jane Lynch, uh, Matthew Broderick, but you get your true crime fix and also the comedy fix in the yeah, show. Oh my gosh. And this, season one of this series, was the uh, most watched uh, premiere for any show on Hulu. So it broke wow. all the records. And this is the sh only show that my mama watches. So really? <laughs> my mom, the, the approval. <laughs> yes, script the show. It's the only one she so watches. Good. Only merch in the building. <laughs> okay, let's talk about um, Liam Neeson. He's got a new thriller. Obviously, this is yes. a wheelhouse for him. What, this what can is, we expect? This is in his wheelhouse. It's, it's a ticking clock thriller, a perfect addition to Liam Neeson's catalog. Mm -hmm. or catalog. He plays a guy named Matt Turner, who's a business executive who basically gets this phone call. The phone call's coming in right now that his car is wired to explode. Ooh. So he's driving his kids to school. He has to then keep the car on the, on the road, follows a series of orders, mm. just making sure his family is safe. This is kind of like people are calling it a combination of Taken mm -hmm. and Speed. Yep. And a splash of Die Hard. Yeah. People okay. need to learn. Don't play with uh, Liam's kids. That's okay, right. that's one thing He's we know by now. He's only movies that have one name, one title. That name is so in the title. true. Wow, very insightful yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Two. <It's not>. <laughs> <laughs> You're up. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, having a good time. <laughs> uh, we got a comedy from our sister company, Universal Pictures. <laughs> This looks really funny, but it also is very profane. Oh, it's very profane. It's called Strays, you guys. It features voices of Jamie Foxx, who is back, Will Ferrell, Sophia Vergara. Also, Will Forte is the human being in this one. It's about a dog named Reggie, who has this Reggie? really trifling owner. That's Will Forte. And he gets basically uh, discarded. And he meets this band of strays, uh, delinquent stray dogs. And they have this plan, a revenge plan, to get back at Doug. It's hilarious. And to your, to your point, it's very profane. It's the only movie to feature a cast of uh, animals or dogs that has an R rating. So <laughs> just look out for a, very pro a lot of profanity. That's it's going to be crazy, okay. um, but a great cast. All yes. right. I love it. Oh um, Jason Statham's back. We've got yes. a sequel. The Meg 2, yes, uh, the Megalodon uh, movie, yeah. He's back, leading this cast of this a research team going into the deep blue, and they encounter not only the largest Megalodon ever recorded in history, but also this whole ecosystem of prehistoric predators. So how do you top the Meg part one? You get giant squid, you get a T-Rex out in the ocean. Whoa. It is absolutely crazy. It, it makes the OG Meg kind of like a walk in the park. Okay. Oh my yeah, gosh, it should be my really son good. Was like that one. Oh, my son loves this one as in well. In fact, speaking of your son, oh we've my got God. the right over here. Oh my God, a microphone. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. I love it. He's a stylish dresser just like I mean, he, he's, yeah. he got a Can little you pull out, hey, Show, show him, uh, Andre's uh, full outfit. I mean, this is, that's, uh, that's a little like deal. He, I like he, it. he constantly keeps me, you know, with a like swag, in drip, as he calls it. In drip? That's what the kids are saying? That's what the kids are saying? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Chris. Yes. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> thank you oh so God. much. Thank you, guys. Nice hey, up Hi. next, who's ready for a reset on a Motivational Monday? We are. We're re uh, learning easy ways to get your family back on track after a busy summer. And later in Cooking with Cal, Ooh. a sausage recipe 
for any barbecue. Oh, out we went outdoors for this we went one. Outdoors. I like a good kielbasa. Third hour of the day, I'll be right back. What's with the manners? It's a sauce. Motivational Monday, we are learning how to prevent summer slide. You know, we often think about it for our kids who are out of school, yeah. but adults can actually face it too. Yes, we can. So, here to get us back on track, Tanya Dalton. She's a, a productivity expert. She's also the author of The Joy of Missing Out. <laughs> of Missing Out. I love that. Uh, great title, by the way. Thank you. Great title. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you know, again, to Dylan's point, summer, summer can be hard. Mm -hmm. you, even at work, people are a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more laid back. How do you give yourself a break from the rat race without, say, going off the rails totally? Yeah, well, first of all, we're not rats, so let's get out of that race, yes, yes. first of all, right? But here's the thing, we truly believe that productivity is about go, 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 get more done. Mm -hmm. And true productivity isn't about doing more, it's doing what's most important. Stepping back, giving yourself a little breather is really, really healthy. We often think of rest as being a reward for great work. Yeah. It's actually a requirement for great work to happen. Okay. So stepping back is really productive. So what are some other tips to be more productive? Yeah, well, one of my favorite things to tell people is it doesn't need to be difficult. It can be incredibly simple. In fact, in The Joy of Missing Out, I have a whole section about simplicity because we have a tendency to overcomplicate things, mm -hmm. don't we? Yes. <laughs> we love to overcomplicate oh, yes. things. Sure. So really, let's think about like our morning routine. Our routine doesn't have to feel so routine. It can feel really nurturing and nourishing to the things we want to do. If productivity is doing what's most important, let's put some of those into our morning routine. Your morning routine is actually just habits. Mm -hmm. Did you know that 40 to 45% of your daily actions are habits? 40 to 45 okay. percent. Right? That's a great yeah. little party tidbit to yeah. share, right? I mean, think about every time you put on your pants, right. put the same leg in first. That's oh. true. It's a habit. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So, Craig does then both it doesn't at the same time. Do. Do. Yeah. Well, yeah. Craig's an overachiever, yeah, so we he have is. that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so if we take some habits we already have and we stack on top of them, yeah. we can create a routine that has a lot more meaning to it. Mm. So less let's of a say. Chore. Exactly, exactly. So let's. Let's take a habit that most people don't think about in the morning, coffee. Right. Who here goes, hey, should I have a cup of coffee? Maybe, maybe not. No. I There's look no forward to that cup of coffee. Right? Just have it automatically. Uh -huh. yeah. Exactly. So let's stack on that habit to do something with intention. So perhaps you're wanting to journal more yeah. and maybe you want to move your body a little bit more. Mm. Okay, well, let's take that habit of coffee and put your journal right next to it. So when you oh. get your cup of coffee, mm. there's your cue. I'm going to grab my journal. Yeah. And then you're going to go sit somewhere. You're going to journal next to that spot. You leave your tennis shoes. So then you go take the dog for a walk. Mm. You see how we just stack yeah. these habits one after the next. So what's interesting is you, you say, instead of a to-do list, you should have a priority list. So what is the difference between these? And I think you've got some examples for us. Yeah, well, the to-do list is one of those habits I would love for people to break, which generally makes people go, yeah, oh I my love God, to-do list. Makes you break out in hives, <laughs> I just right? wrote one this morning. <laughs> I haven't done anything on it. Well, this is the thing. If we want our lives to be simple, our to-do list is not simple. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about this. How often do you write something down right. just to cross it off? 
Have you done that? Yes. Huh. Yeah, me. I've yeah. done that for sure. If you're doing that, it's a sure sign that your to-do list is working against you. Hmm. Because our brain loves that check mark. It sure. loves crossing it's things like off. Yep. It's like a reward. It's like, wake up. It's a little hit of dopamine, and our brain goes, ooh, that feels good. So we want to make sure that we're not just doing things to check them off. That's the low-hanging fruit. That's why we go to bed absolutely exhausted because we were busy, but feeling like we haven't done enough. Mm -hmm. Right? So our to-do list is too long. It's unorganized. So for it's example, haphazard. you say long and unattainable. What's right. the priority version? Well, the priority version is much shorter. So instead of having a list that's just running, 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 mm -hmm. we're going to have five to maybe seven items on there. And we're going to start ranking things in priority. Mm -hmm. And then we want to make sure that we're really making clear choices. We want it to be organized. Overwhelm is this word I hear all the time sure. from people. Oh, I feel so overwhelmed. Overwhelm isn't having too much to do. It's not knowing where to start. Oh, and a really wow. good priority list mm -hmm. tells you where to start. So by organizing. It takes organizing. away a lot of that anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the steps to creating the priority list? How do we go about doing it? I love that question because I like to say a priority list is a to-do list with intention. It takes the same amount of time and yet it's organized, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have three categories and the top category is escalate. Okay. So the first thing we have to understand is urgent and important are not the same thing. Important tasks are like tied to our goals. They're things that are essential that must be done by us. They're an investment in our future. Yeah. Urgent only means it's got a deadline, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we think that things are urgent should be the first thing that we do. But in fact, we want to start with escalate at the very top of our list, which are things that are urgent. They have a looming deadline, mm -hmm. but they're also important. So they're tied to our goals or tied to the important mm -hmm. work that we're doing. Okay, so a task that might be under escalate might be fixing your car if it's broken down yeah, right. or getting ready for a presentation that's happening tomorrow. And then okay. cultivate and accommodate. Cultivate is important, but not so urgent. So that's okay. the longer term things mm -hmm. like maybe signing up for a class or working on a project that's not due for a couple <coughs> okay. of weeks so we can mm -hmm. do a better job. And then at the bottom, we have accommodate. Accommodate are things that are urgent, but they're not really important. It's like 99% of your inbox right now. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Those go. are accommodate. Tanya, thank you. Yeah. This is great. This is really Absolutely. helpful. Motivational Monday. Thank you so much. Tanya Dalton. All right, coming up next, nothing says summer quite like firing up the grill. And Cal and I have just the recipe to elevate your Ooh, barbecue elevate. game. Yeah, okay. elevate. Yes, there we go. Accommodate. This is super simple. Cultivate. We'll have a free one. Come right back. Another, another edition of Cooking with Cal, and this time we are making a super simple, I mean like the easiest appetizer you could ever make for your summer barbecue. All you need to do is fire up the grill. Take a look. It's another edition of Cooking with Cal. What are we making today? Grilled kibasi. Kibasi. What does this actually say? Kielbasa. Kielbasa? Huh. This whole time I've been calling it kibasi. So this is a super simple, like if you just need something to throw together for a barbecue, if you're having people over, this is the recipe to make. So, first things first, let's open up the kibasi, okay? Can you separate that, can you open that? What? How strong are you? I'm actually gonna make, let you make, good job. I'm actually gonna let you do all of this yourself, except the grilling, okay? okay. I'm gonna let you do it all, so I have your knife. So first things first, I want you to cut it in half right there. Hold your hand like right here and saw at it a little bit. There you go, it's easy, right? Yeah, okay, so now, because we want to get this nice and crispy, I want you to cut it right down the middle. And we're just gonna slice. Oh no. 
distance, okay? Great, and the middle, perfect. Okay, that's one. You said you're not gonna have. Well, I was assisting. I'm still, you're still doing it, right? Perfect. So this is ready for the grill. Should we grill this up? Yeah. Okay. It's hot out here, huh? Woo! And very bright. And very bright. It's hot and sunny. It's summertime, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna do this side first so it cooks through, okay? You know what's cool about kibasi? You can eat it just like that. It's already cooked. So while that's cooking, we're gonna make the sauce. Okay? Let's start with some mayonnaise. What's your mayonnaise song? Mayonnaise on my finger, cheese on my hand. Let's sing it. I want mayonnaise on my finger, cheese in my, my hand. hand. Go, go, go. So let go. And then go again. Did you pull a muscle? Oh, that's hard. So let's do a couple scoops. How much? Um, let's start with one scoop. Okay, pop that in. So I don't really make measurements with this. I kind of just guess like how much we need. So we'll set that aside. And now we're gonna pour in a little bit of honey. Well, honey, it comes out fast! <laughs> Pretty good, huh? It turns into little C's for cooking with cow. How about I cut and you stick toothpicks? It's raining. I know. What's it doing outside? It's gonna make a rainbow. So we like to serve it. We got this. We got the sauce. All right? And then we dip it in. And we eat it. Try one. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> you want me? these recipes more head to today.com slash food all right well done Cal. nicely done this we is tried, very good tried to do that as fast as possible it was so so hot outside but oh, like it it's was. a nice quick easy little thing yeah right? it's great like sauce too right. for this recipe sauce. more head to today.com slash food we'll be right back i don't well know why i said it here right well Well, that does it for us on the Monday. It's great having you back. It is. Thank you. Coming up, nice we've got, <laughs> it is, tomorrow singer Scott Hoying of Pentatonix is here with a live performance. And up next on Hoda and Jenna, ways to update your living space. We will see you right back here tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. Please, we hope to see you. Bye-bye. If you see my luggage, let me know. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh, you deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al.
the home design star who never set out to be one. Gailey Alex shares her personal story of heartbreak and resilience, plus her decorating advice that can help any space. Then it's Christmas in July. We've got your first look at this year's hottest toys. And Madonna's heartfelt message to her family just weeks after her serious medical scare. We'll tell you what the pop icon is saying. It's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. Hey guys, how are you? Monday, oh no, don't look at your calendar because if you look at your calendar, you'll know. <laughs> that this is the very last day of July. Yeah, you'll also know it just because Hoda just told you. <laughs> How did it go last. by so fast? I don't, I, you know what? We kept trying to savor and linger, but it is the last day of July, which means we have the whole month of August. Yeah and the first week of September. Did you just of. see how you just took that and spun it and said, we actually have a ton of summer left? We have a ton left. of summer left because a lot of kids were in school till June, so really, they, you know, yeah. they haven't had much summer yet. We're, about, had, we're halfway uh, through. Little, yeah. How was your weekend? My weekend was great. <gasps> I happened? went down to Texas. Oh. And we got our girl back. Oh, from camp? Yes, we picked her up from camp. Okay, that has to, oh That's my, stop it. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't get to, I blinked and I missed the beginning part. Oh, oh my God, they're almost the same height? <laughs> yes. What's going on? Oh, oh. It was so fun. There's nothing wait, like reuniting. Wait, wait, so you brought Poppy on the, on I the adventure Poppy and your on hat. Trip, you brought your hat. And I brought and my Poppy. large hat. Just to, can we just see the reunion? Because I turned my head for a second. Okay, you can watch it. No, we but I'd like to again. see it. Maybe they'll play it again. Okay. Okay, here it goes. Oh my God. That's, the, you know, that kind of koala bear wrap that you Where get. Where there's the legs yes. up above. Oh my God. That's, by the way, that is so awesome. By the way, oh, I was so happy. Wanna, it's like it's worse sending your kids to camp just so you can get them back. <laughs> I said, and does she love camp? Does she, she always loves love sleepaway? Okay. Yeah, she loves it. I mean, it's definitely it's she's the own probably one of the only kids from the Northeast. Yeah. It's a lot of Texans. Yes. It's really hot. Yes. No, no air conditioning. And it was 112. But she loves it. And she it's so it. fun to go see her and, and <laughs> feel that independence. It's just it is like, you know, sleepaway camp is a rite of passage. How old is Mila? I forgot. She's 10. 10. Wow. Yeah, she's How old's Poppy? Uh, Poppy <laughs> is eight, almost eight on almost August eight. 13th. Okay, almost eight. And Hal turns wow. four on <gasps> Wednesday. Wow. You four. got so many birthdays. I know. This Can is so exciting. Um, but I will say there was something um, so, so sweet about mm. seeing the sisters yes. reunite and having them, they put on a water ballet show later <gasps> that night together. <laughs> And they did this whole, yeah, it was a sort of a, in it was a um, Barbie world and pop, no, it was in a small pool. <laughs> Poppy was Ken and Mila was Barbie, <laughs> which is just like a birth order thing. Um, it's, it's, the, you know how good oh it is my to God. see the sisters By the way, Oh God. And you still have a whole bunch of summer left with everybody home. We have a That's whole bunch be really of summer. Cool. Okay, really wait, cool. you saw this incredible video. Every now and then, you know, you come across a video and you're like, wow. That's an incredible video. So a friend of mine showed me this video. You know that old Cat Stevens song? It's called Peace Train. Yes. So what they did, I'll just set it up. They found all these artists from all over the world with headphones on, listening to the song and playing it. There's artists you know, there's artists you don't. Okay, just watch okay. a little bit of this. Check it out. Oh, <laughs> Now I've been happy lately, thinking about the good things to come, and I believe it could be Just something me. good has begun. Oh, I've been smiling lately, dreaming about the world as one, and I believe it could be someday it's gonna come. Cause I'm on the edge of darkness, there rise the peace train. Oh, be strange to take this country. Come take me home again. Now Look, you go, oh, no, 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 there's a little more, little tiny, tiny, tiny more. Oh, wait, the gospel group. <laughs> this is from Hattiesburg. <laughs> Turn it up. 
Ryan Beck. Y'all. Oh my gosh, how can we watch it's that? It's so insane. Is that insane? Can we put this wait, song on our playlist? Wait, yes. By the way, Cat Stevens sings it at the end. Yeah. All, oh, he does? Yes, all over the world. It just reminds you what connects. They do it in different languages. It's that rhythm. Oh. It's all the way from Rhinebeck to New York to Ghana Don't to you love that? Ireland. I'm crying. I love I that. I love it. And it shows you how much we have in yes. common. Yes. Play it, Peace Train. We'll add it to our playlist, but if you just go on YouTube and put it in, <laughs> you'll find it. It's this real good. This is what Hoda does during commercial breaks. So Wait, have you seen this? <laughs> and then she's using my phone because she's forgotten hers yeah, to take yeah. to me to a YouTube channel. Yeah, but it's so good. Um, oh, and, and by the way, let's add it to our Hoda and Jenna Summers playlist. Yeah, yes, we do. And Here is our playlist. If you want it, we're adding more songs, too. So that's the QR code. We're going to put it on Spotify, and we're going to keep adding. We're going to add Peace Train, that version. Yes, please. Because that's an interesting Interesting version. Yeah, we need to add Brandy Carlisle. Brandy Carlisle's got to be there from the Barbie movie. Yes. Okay. All right. So Madonna is feeling better after yeah. being hospitalized last month for a bacterial infection. Yeah. And last night she posted a tribute mm -hmm. to her kids. Um, she wrote this. As a mother, you can really get caught up in the needs of your children and the seemingly endless giving. But when the, my, the chips were down, my children really showed up for me. I saw a side to them I had never seen before. It made all the difference. This always reminds me, and I've said this to you before, but it reminds me so much of what Meredith Vieira said about her husband. Meredith Vieira's husband has MS. Mm -hmm. And she said, do you know what MS gave us? And I said, what? She said, it gave me better children. Ooh. Because your children turn into caregivers. They're not the center. So when someone's having trouble walking across the street, your kid notices. Yeah. Let, they might need help. Yeah. Because they've grown up helping. Yes. Like you get how it would actually make, it's, it's horrible, yeah. obviously, to go through yeah. anything. Like what Madonna went yes. through or what. But it's so funny because when you said that, I mean, I have a husband whose father was in a wheelchair yes. from before he was born. And look at Lived Henry. with polio. Yes. And Henry, his, his nature is to, to be a nurturer. Yes. To help, but also yes. to stand up for what's right. Yes. He said he had, one of his first memories, or, or you know, school days was his, his, some boy said, well, at least my dad's not in a wheelchair and threw a rock at him and Henry ran at him he couldn't help it and he went to the principal's office with the boy and Henry's the principal I think knew how bad that Oof. probably hurt him Oof. but you know it's like and, ah. and it's that kind of thing where it's like now I watch him with my kids yes and it is this beautiful gift Ugh. you know and my kids saw it my yeah. kids got to be with their grandpa too wow um, um uh, all right should we just move on? I think it's time. Coming up next, is it okay to tell your friend's kids what to call you? Yes, I think that's totally fine, but let's but discuss let's find it. Out We're going to find out. Does that violate the girl code? After this. It is that time when Jen and I try to solve our female friendship dilemmas in a segment we like to call Girl, Girl Code. Code. All right, what do we got? All right, so here's the first one. Ready? Right. I'm about to stay with my friend for the weekend. She doesn't keep the neatest home. Is it rude if I show up with my own set of sheets? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is rude. So weird. Yes. That's how unkempt is the house? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> that you got to bring your own sheets. I know she doesn't wash wait, them. Wait, what? I don't know. Maybe she showing has... up with your own sheets is rude. Although I will say, sometimes Henry travels with his pillow. Well, that I get. 
I get it. Okay, no, thank a pillow. You, Ramey. A pillow is totally because understandable. Because a pillow is it's about comfort. It's comfort. not about cleanliness. No, no, but let's go back to the friend sheets. with the dirty sheets. Yeah. Maybe. Also, you don't have to go stay with her. Why don't her. you guys stay in a hotel and have a yeah. sleepover? Why didn't she come visit you? Yeah. But to show up with your own sheets and change the bed, no, unless you do it sneakily while she's asleep. I, you know what I would do? I would dump some. You know what I would do? Oh, yeah, that's Here's a my good plan. Idea. I would go to the bed, go, oh, my God, I'm so happy. I would have a little bit of wine, not much, just a little. And White. Go, oh, my White. God. White. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Do you have any fresh sheets? Yeah. And then I would wash those. That's a those. great idea. Good but plan. Also, don't make hurt. sure that the wine. Is white. white, white wine. But Don't then she'll say, red. "You can't see it. Don't worry about it." No, you have to do something. She doesn't Dramatic. mind. Yes. Okay. What about coffee? A little coffee okay, will do. Okay, fine. It. Next up, I always recommend books and TV shows to my friend, but she never takes any of them. <laughs> How do I convince her to listen to me? <laughs> Did you submit that? <laughs> no, I didn't. But maybe. Um, here's what I always say about. I think your job is to recommend. Yeah. And it's up to the other person whether or not they'd like to receive what you're giving. Yeah, because it really isn't about you. Do you it's know what I mean? Because pretend I say to you, have you read, and you say like no, you say, like I say every month. What happened? Did and you read you say it? no, but here's the reason why you haven't. Not because you don't trust my no, recommendation, but because you have your own life yeah. full of reading yeah. other things. And, and I think sometimes people get confused. And I'll take it a step further, and this is not to go down a rocky road, but it's like, you know, sometimes when there's a homeless person and someone says, well, I'm not going to give that person money because what if they buy a beer with it or yeah. whatever? And then it, to me, it's like your job is to give. Yeah, totally. And then you're done. Totally. Then you only have one job. What they do with it is not your totally. concern, not your business even. Yeah. They can do whatever. If, if, if a beer get, makes them feel good for 15 minutes, yeah. okay. And guess then what? So what? Not everybody's taste is the exact same. Yes, everybody's different. Back to you. Last one. I'm really close with my friend and her kids. I really, I would really love them to call me aunt. Oh. But she's never offered that up. Is that something I can ask for? Okay. So you would say, well, I think this is what you do. You arrive at the house. Like we all saw the movie Uncle Buck back in the day, remember? God, you I love that movie. I love Uncle Buck. Such I forgot what happened. Movie. Was he really the no. uncle or he was Can't the remember. friend that was an uncle? The funkle, fake uncle. Fake uncle. Okay. So you arrive, yeah. you open the door, yeah. you come in, and you're like, look what Aunt Jenna brought you kids. And you look at your friend. You don't even look at the kids. You look at your friend's face, and if wait she's- Wait for a reaction? Oh, I think you wait for a reaction. In the moment? In the moment. I don't think you give her space to make her own decision. Maybe she only likes to call her really blood relative's aunt. I don't, I don't think, do people care that much? Some Would people, you care no, I, if Karen I came call, over and said, hey, oh, they call, they they call, call her, her aunt. aunt. Darren. I told her, they asked who are my cousins and my aunts, and I told them yeah. all my friends. By the way, and my, their kids. I, Uncle Brad is still my favorite uncle, yeah. and he's not even my uncle. Yeah. I think it's fun. Who is he? He's my dad's best friend, Uncle oh. Brad. He's Uncle Brad, I love you, and okay. thank you for letting me call you uncle. And your favorite, you pointed that out. So, <laughs> <laughs> your uncle. No, no, I like the other one. No, too. but you said favorite. I love him, though. Okay. If you've got a girl code question, tell us all about at HodaAndJenna.com, then hit the connect button. Coming up next, home design star Gailey Alex shares her story of resilience, plus her decor tips that will add a wow factor to your living wow. spaces. After this. Wow, she does yeah, wow. wow. Coming up tomorrow. We catch up with legendary author Judy Bloom. And we'll toast two best friends turned business partners who are making history. Plus, the power foods to help boost your immunity and get a better night's sleep. All Tuesday on Hoda and Jenna.
right, you could say this. Gailey Alex is a jack of all trades, working as a Wall Street executive by day, and then on the weekends, she's tackling home design projects. And in the process, she became a TV star with her own home renovation show. Yeah, but Gailey has had to navigate many ups and downs before she shares some of her design tips with all of us. She's sharing her very personal mm. story. Take a look. Come on in! For the last five years, Gailey Alex has been on a journey of self-discovery, finding her passion for helping others through home design. Ever since I was little, I was just constantly reorganizing things in my parents' home. But after college, life took her on a different path and into a career in finance in Florida. The largest firm on Wall Street reached out and I ended up landing my dream job. With her career falling into place, next came love for Gailey in 2018. He proposed in the primary bedroom of the new home that we just got. I will commute every single weekend from Florida to Connecticut and I'll work on the house and get it all ready. I started calling designers and contractors and nobody would work on the weekends. I just realized if I want this done, I have to do it myself. So she began DIYing each room and posting the progress on social media. But behind the happy facade online, Gailey was facing her own personal battle in secret. I was trying to be the perfect fiance, the perfect homemaker, the perfect designer, and it was too much. It kind of culminated in a really, really, really severe eating disorder. I felt like I had control over nothing, and so I started controlling food. It was going to kill me if I didn't do something about it. You feel like if you tell anybody, they're not gonna love you or want you anymore. The reason my fiance left me was because I, I, I opened up about it, and I said that I was struggling with it. I didn't blame him for leaving me right then and there on the spot because um, I had been dishonest, right? I'd been hiding something that I was doing to myself. So Gailey returned to Fort Lauderdale to focus on getting the help she needed. The first thing I did was delete Instagram from my phone. After several months in therapy, she found the strength to log back into her social media account for the first time. It turns out the videos I had made of me doing our home in Connecticut had started to go viral and people were reaching out thinking I'm a designer, which I am not, and asking me if I could do the same thing in their home. I just started saying yes to people that were local. Instead of staying home and feeling sorry for myself this weekend, I'm gonna go and help somebody with their house. And Gailey brought millions of followers along for the ride. Coming in. Earlier this year, all her hard work culminated in a new design show called Home in a Heartbeat, streaming now on Max. When you see them walk into their house with their eyes closed and then they open their eyes and the reaction is amazing. There's something so invigorating about knowing that something you just did made somebody's life better. And the past year, Gailey also opened herself up to love again with boyfriend Dale Moss. I literally opened up our dinner explaining I went through this difficult breakup, my fiance left me, I had an eating disorder, and his response wasn't to get up and walk away. Instead, he opened up. It's created Hi. the healthiest, happiest bond that I've ever had with another person. And through her healing journey, Gailey has found her own inner joy. Gratitude is really easy when you've been in a really dark place. I think I needed to lose all of those things in order for me to be reborn into the best version of myself and to have the life that I get to have now. Wow, Gailey, first of all, welcome. What a journey. Wow, I feel like we just saw the highs and lows of your life yeah. and here you are back on top of the mountain. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling elated to be here and just so grateful that this story turned out the way it did because it could have been a very, very different ending if I didn't go to therapy and start working on myself. Yeah, it's so, you know, it's so interesting because it's you kept all of these things to yourself. Yeah. You kept this secret and it probably was hard to heal because you weren't honest about it. And now you're telling your story yeah. outwardly to, to so many. And, and I wonder how that feels. Do you feel free? I feel like 
by perfecting people's homes, it allowed me to stop focusing on perfecting myself yeah. and my body and how I looked. And but when your fiance leaves you right before your wedding unexpectedly, you kind of feel unwanted. Mm -hmm. And you guys wanted me here today. <laughs> yeah. These homeowners want me in their homes and it gave me a sense of self-worth again. So to say I am grateful to get to be right here and to be in people's homes yeah. is, I, I have no words. Well, yeah. you said you, in the piece you said you weren't a designer, but we beg to differ yes, because you, are. <laughs> you, you most definitely, definitely are. Did you have any idea? I mean, look, you you have a knack for it, obviously, somewhere along the way. When did you go? When did you think to yourself, yeah, actually, I'm actually this is something I'm very good at? When I got out of therapy and I yeah. logged back into social media yeah. and I had yeah. I had thousands yeah. of people asking to fly me all over the world, <laughs> Australia, Mexico, wow. India. Can you help me with this? And I'm thinking. Should I tell them I'm not? I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, right? So but now you have a design yeah. show, which yeah. is incredible. So obviously, yeah. you're beyond talented. We want to. We want to see some of your work. Yeah, yeah let's show it. All right, let's All right. start off with ceilings. ceilings. You've got okay. a before photo. I like how you're moving your chair. You yeah, get you're in there. getting in. You're getting All in. Right. All right, here's the before, before photo. photo. Okay, can here's you... the before, and then here's the after. There yeah. it goes. Okay, it we're, we're working. Oh, okay. What did you do here? The thing is, we always forget about ceilings. Everyone's so myopic on yeah. what rug do I do? What do I hang on the wall? Yeah. But that don't forget the difference. ceilings wow. because it completes the space. It makes it feel more custom. Uh -huh. Here I did a drop down wood paneling with an X design in it to make yes. it unique. And it is. It is something everybody forgets about. <gasps> yes. So, so ceilings all day, every day. Okay. So gorgeous. Okay. okay. The before and look after. at the before. Yeah. What a, that's by the way, dramatic. night and day. Dramatic. And the game changer truly is the ceiling. Yeah, You're right. Is, right. Although what you did on the wall was pretty cool. Yeah, too. that's cool. I'm so yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's that. move on to a creating a cozy vibe in the living room. You say it's all about symmetry. Okay. So here's that's the before. before this is the before, and here's the after. Yeah. Wow. Okay, and now if we can do a side by side, what you will notice is that I use symmetry for the bigger pieces. Yeah. yeah. So I've got the two poofs kind of mirroring each other. I've got That's the cool. two couches yes. mirroring each other. But you don't want to get too matchy matchy with the smaller things. So I know, notice all five throw pillows are different. The textures of the poofs are different. Cool. So the key is to get symmetry with the bigger pieces, but yeah. with the smaller ones, don't get so matchy matchy. By the way, you didn't forget the ceiling there either. I love that. I love that you appreciate that. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Wow, those oh are incredible. Gosh, Gailey, Gailey, you are so you incredible. You are so talented. We're so happy for Thank your you. life and your new love and all the things yeah. that are happening. You feeling good? I'm so excited that I got to be here with you oh, today. Oh, so thank, thank you for making you. it right And this here. show is so much fun. Yes, you're so talented. Please check it out. All Home right. in a Heartbeat. It's streaming now on Max. Congratulations. All right, coming up next, the Tony-winning star of some of the biggest and best shows on Broadway. Yeah, we'll meet Jay Harrison G after this. Now to the star who was born to be on Broadway, Jay Harrison G. Jay debuted at the Great White right Way back in 2017, mm -hmm. starring alongside, Lo starring as Lola and Kinky Boots. And then a few years later, joined the original cast of the musical Mrs. Doubtfire based on the popular film. Last year, Jay originated the role of Jerry slash Daphne in Some Like It Hot based on the 1959 movie and went on to win the Tony for a leading actor in a musical, Jay Harrison G. We're so happy.
happy that you're here. Thank you for having Tony me. Tony Award winner. Do you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, what? Is that how you like to be introduced now? Oh, my God. My brother will literally not say my name without saying Tony Award winner first. <laughs> but, but we want to point out that when the nominations were first announced, you, we were so lucky because you happen to have been here. I was literally sitting right here sitting on Sitting right floor. here. You're having, oh look at gosh, this. Look, look at this. this. <laughs> this was what, it literally happened in the middle of the show. We announced it. Yeah. That was a moment. And then take us back to the night where you actually won the Tony. What was like? Was that like for you? Oh, my God. It was incredible. I was sitting next to my mother, who was my date, and oh. I wanted to give her her flowers for all that she has oh. imparted into me. She is such a big inspiration and such a leading, driving force in my life. And it was so wonderful to share that moment with her. And she's still unpacking that moment. And, <laughs> and it is still so overwhelming. But it's so wonderful that, like, so much is happening in the world and I just wanted to show her how she's played a part in that for all that she's taught me oh my truly. Gosh. You've said that your matriarchs, your mom and mm -hmm. your grandmother mm -hmm. were the inspiration for everything. Yeah. What did they what did they see in you? How yeah. did they how Help did you. they see you? Oh, yeah. my Lord. My mother really just allowed me to be me, whether it made sense to her or not. Mm. Um, and my grandmother really just showed me how to love and how to give and how to show up and be true to who I am. And I'm grateful to them for being such leading forces of, of power, of mm. strength, and of grace in my mm. life, truly. Yeah. How did you, because throughout life, everyone goes through things in school, how did you withstand and like a lot of kids did, the teasing and all those kinds yeah. of things. Yeah, I definitely went home a lot of times crying to my mother and was like, Mom, why don't they get me? Why don't, don't they, they understand me? me? Yeah. And she's like, they don't have to. <gasps> Oh, That's a good answer. They don't have to. If they haven't taken the time to get to know you for who you are, don't allow that to affect you so much. <laughs> and I really did start to, to adapt that and take that on and the understanding of, great, you don't have to understand me. You didn't take the time to really get to know me yeah. and ask me questions and, and, and meet me where I am. Yeah. So I don't have to really take on your energy. And it has been wonderful to, to free myself that in that way. That is so oh. liberating and Love such it. great advice. Yeah. That's yeah. great advice. Um, I, you performed your entire life. Yeah. From cruises. Yeah. <laughs> All of it. Tokyo Disney. When, when you were little, was this your dream? All of it. Yeah, every bit of it. Um, and I didn't oh. I didn't know oh what it gosh. could to really feel like. Um, like that moment specifically, I will never forget hosting the, the school show mm -hmm. and standing on that chair and seeing <laughs> I had something special that the room yeah. was affected and moved by. And I was like, Oof, something's happening I, I got to do something with this eventually one day. Well, you're helping other young performers. There was a young boy named Brody who came by the Schubert Theater. Yes. And you had such a big impact on him. Take a look. Take a Listen, guys. As an artist, you get to change people's lives. And that's a special thing. Whether people understand that, you have a gift. And people need your light and your love and your energy. So always protect you, but okay. also know that you have something special to give the world. Okay. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> oh. Okay, that was now so we're weeping. <laughs> just, that, that moment was so beautiful for me because his mom literally just said, take a picture taking in the theater together, and we did. And just seeing the innocence and the purity uh -huh. and the confidence in him yeah. uh, was so inspiring. And so as I was speaking to him, I was speaking to little me as yeah. well, of like, mm, this is yeah. the thing I don't want anyone to take away from you to know that you are so special, uh -huh. to live in this freedom, to live in this joy, to walk in this power. As an artist, it is something very special. And so it, that just, it came, came out, out of me. Of you. And then I went to my dressing room and cried uh. because it, it really did just, it moved me to be able to, to share that moment with Brody. Um, there's yeah. some rumors that you might have some music coming out. There are things in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm excited for that opportunity to, to just keep playing and keep inspiring and to find new parts of myself to share with people and um, to give them a little hope and a little joy. Wow, Gosh. you're incredible. Yeah. Thank you for being with oh, us today. Love and and beautiful. Light. You can catch Jay Harrison G in Some Like It Hot. Uh, it's at the Schubert Theater here yeah. in New York City. Get to it, Tony Thank Award you. winner. Yeah. Coming indeed. up next, pack your bags. We're gonna help you stretch out your summer with some great getaways after this.
believe that tomorrow is the first day of oh August. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we want to help you stretch out summer with some incredible getaways. You can still book today. Yeah, they are available. Here to help us out is the host of PBS's Samantha Brown's Places to Love. Samantha Brown is here. Hi. Hi. How are We're you? privileged August to have 1st. you here. Thank you. Okay, so we can still get deals. Still there get are still deals. places to go. So can you start us off? Take us to the Midwest. Yeah, so one of the great places to go to right now for August is Route 66. Now, Route 66 spans eight states. You couldn't do yes. that in the month of August if you had the time. <laughs> but the state of Illinois, you can do a mini trip. How do fun would that be? Days, lots of history, a lot of fun. So and you just ride along Route 66 and what, what else is there car. to do? Absolutely. Rent a car in Chicago and then you can uh, fly out of St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah. A lot of things to do. So you want to start in Joliet. Joliet. If you're a Blues Brothers fan, it was filmed. The first scene was the Joliet oh, prison. This okay. is where Jake, Joliet Jake gets out of prison. Uh, this is McLean, uh, Virginia. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, Virginia. Yeah. Illinois. Yeah. Um, it's a really lovely town, but it's an arcade. The entire town Wait, what? is an arcade. Wait, I've never That's the heard crazy. of that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and this is uh, this is Cahokia State Mound, uh, oh, Mound wow. State Park. 120 mounds. It's the largest pre-Columbian settlement um, north of Mexico. That sounds wow. like so that much does fun. Sound like a cool place and to go. And kind of off the beaten path. Okay, take yeah. us south. What's yeah. next on your list? South, uh, St. Augustine, Florida. Well, oh, we're going to Chattanooga. We're going to Chattanooga. Chattanooga. Okay. First, do you mind? <laughs> take us to Chattanooga. Chatt They're both south. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Small city on the Tennessee River, Appalachian Mountains. You've got both the city adventures and country adventures. This is the Tennessee Aquarium. Yeah. It is the largest, one of the largest freshwater aquariums in the world. Perfect for kids Ooh. and couples. Yeah. Uh, but then there's also the Chattanooga Choo Choo Station. Whoa. This used to be the transportation look hub at, of the South. Look at you just it's wandering around. It's now a fantastic around. hotel. <laughs> yes. They've got restaurants. Restaurants, oh, uh, gosh, great place. Gorgeous. This is Rock City. This is one of the first like tourist attractions in the United States. Massive mounds that you can walk around under and over. Beautiful. Now we're at the Reflection Riding Arboretum. You can rent, uh, take uh, an electric <laughs> vehicle, and uh, there's no sound. So Wait. you're going through the nature. Wait, that and sounds, oh, so that sounds fun. Fun. Yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, I would love to do that. All right, take us to Florida, okay, St. Augustine. Florida. Now, of course, Florida spot. is a family destination. Sure. I love St. Augustine for couples. Oh, uh, couples. It's uh, St. Augustine. Augustine is a lot more relaxed. Uh, right now, we're looking at GTM uh, State Preserve. There's a lot of shark teeth there. You can go for long walks. This is Flagler How College. Beautiful. It used to be the Hotel Ponce de Leon, a beautiful, oh. elaborate hotel in the Golden Age. The dining hall has 40 original Tiffany stained glass windows. Oh, That's my a gosh. great place to Gorgeous. get nachos and cheese for those guys. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> um, that sounds like All so much right. fun. Okay, I'm going here. Where? On vacation Where are you going? in a little bit. Oh, of course. And, um, to visit my family. I can't wait. Maine. Yes, uh, coast of Maine, the entire coast. Oh. You've got lobster and homemade blueberry pie and rocky coast and 3,400 miles of, of craggy shoreline. That's and there's gorgeous. not a bad place to stop. I love, this is Acadia right now. But right now in August, uh, second two last weeks of August, it starts to slow down, as you yeah, know. Okay. And it's so good time to schools go. are back, so it's a good time mm -hmm. to go. There's a lot of more availability. By mm -hmm. the way, gorgeous. You love it there. I love like it there so much. Oh, you have to come there. sometime. And visit your your okay. namesake, my dad. As <laughs> a reminder of her dad, you would enjoy it. <laughs> okay, don't okay. ask. All right. So, what about the national parks? Those are okay. big. So, this is Letchworth State Park. It's oh, actually in okay. Western oh, New York City, okay. and it's called the Grand Canyon of the East wow. Coast. Wait, it is known what? for its waterfalls. Where is it? It's Wait, stunning. Where is this? Western New York. It is a state park, and it is home to the Autism Nature Trail, the only oh. one of its kind in the United States. It's a one-mile oh, loop goodness. with Would pavilions. You? that help children with wow, autism work out their sensory and motor skills. Everyone's invited. And why August? There's availability. You can actually still stay in the park in its beautiful inn that used to be its original estate. You can tour the Autism Nature Trail. You can also stay in one of the state cabins. But you can, with this park, you can fly into either Rochester or Buffalo, New York. You've got the Great Lakes as well as the excuse me, the Finger Lakes, wow. and it's yes. available. National parks, you have to you have yeah. to plan a year in advance. You can go this I month. I can't believe that that's right here. So we cool. no we got to go. Samantha, we did not know. No. <laughs> Samantha, you teach us everything. Yeah. Coming up next, thank you so much. It's still summer, but Santa's already on the job. We're going to check out his list of hot toys that you're going to want for Christmas. We're talking <laughs> Christmas after this. Slow down, summer.
afford it. If you're wondering where, whether Christmas in July is really a real thing, well, it is, especially when it comes to big annual event here in New York. It's called Toy Insider Sweet Sweet. Okay, we checked out all the hot toys kids will be clamoring for this year, including everything from Pokemon to Barbie. There's only one person that can help us with this. That's Toy Insider's Lori Schacht brought some of her favorites Lori, to us. Lori, we wait for you. Uh, okay. I love to be here, and we're going to start with a game that is perfect for the entire family. Okay. Straight from Jurassic World. Okay. These are our ravenous raptors. Oh, wow. These are hungry chomping dinos. So let's pour their food in. Pour we pour all. more and more. Yep. And we want to get as many as we can. Some are green, some are red. Um, Does it matter? Which one do you get? Do you get more points? Oh my gosh. You get more points if you have the carnivore one because these are raptors. Look what you like just me. did. That's right. I cleaned oh, up. This is how it is game. So it's a great game and I love it because even little kids can play. Um, no reading required, yeah, but definitely. the whole family will have a good time. Christian oh, and Michaela are you here. playing yes, who? with Ken and Barbie? <laughs> uh, yes. So in the movie, the slide goes all the way from her room down, down. to the pool. And is guess what? So this is the Barbie dream house. It's beautiful. You have 10 spaces indoor and okay. out to play. It comes with over 75 different accessories. We have our convertible over here to drive as well. Oh wow. my God. Right? Barbie just like the movie. Yeah. Can we so just it's say you beautiful. need to have a large space for this? this you is do, it. you do, but it's gorgeous. It's got 75 accessories. It's got an elevator that's wheelchair accessible. Cool. Um, it's got room for the pets, a pool for the pets. It's just awesome. By the it way, for not... all the moms who saw Barbie, they're getting it for their kids, whether their kid <laughs> wanted it or not. Right? I know. Have the Barbie toys already gone oh, off the I about the pool and, scene. Right, and all these Don't beautiful forget. dolls. So, you know, the Barbies run from $11 to $50. 11 for your fashionistas, <laughs> um, up to $50 for the new beautiful fashion okay. dolls. Cool. Hi. Hi. Hello. Are you making pottery? pottery here? Hi, Parker. Hi. What are you doing? Making pottery? Yeah. Okay. So this is so cool. It is a mini <gasps> pottery studio. Cool. So kids are going to learn how to play with this. Um, they're going to make 10 projects. It comes with instructions and materials, everything they so need. So crazy, That's very right? Cool. It's mess-free. There's no heating to this. Um, you're just going to let it air dry and paint it. And when kids get um, comfortable yeah. doing it with the dome on, they can actually take it off and use the tools without it as well. Look That's cool. beautiful. Yeah, Where and look at all the beautiful Parker. things you can make. Oh, this is cute. all from here. How All cool. right. right? Thank, Thank you, you, Parker. Thanks, Parker. All, All right. right. Oh. Let's get some <laughs> sugar candy. Here we go. So, if you want to make the holidays what even you... more special, this is our real cotton candy maker. And all we do one, is on, we pull scoop? just one scoop. We oh. put the sugar in. We just made these in the machine. And this is going to start swirling yeah, out. Yeah, it takes time. Yeah, just take a little time. Can See? Nope. Here, here it comes. No, sure? no, no. Yep. yep. Smells good. Overdo you overdo you can smell it. Yeah. I, I want so to, we too, just turned it on. Normally, you'd let this heat up for about five, six minutes. And then you're going to start swirling. See, I'm getting the yeah. beginning of it. It is awesome. And it tastes delicious. I don't know. I feel like this is a great gift to give a neat. Because then you can give it. It is good for everyone. You know? The whole family is going to enjoy it. All right. Um, okay, what okay. is this? So, Polly Pocket? No. no. This is something so cool. Wait, what? I want you to open it up. So I know that you know what a digital pet is, but you've never met one like this. Oh my God, Wait. Meow. This is oh. Bitsy. So go ahead and touch it. So Bitsy starts oh my God, out as it a likes puppy. When you pet it. Yes, no, this is a cat. No. Yep, there's yeah, well, 15 cat. different ones. It starts out. Oh my God, out. he rolls over. It's, What's he doing? What's so, he talking? Well, he's chatting with you. He's telling you if he's hungry. You can swipe through different things. Oh. So it starts out as a puppy. You're gonna love it. You're gonna feed it. You're gonna do all kinds of cool things, and you're gonna get more pets, more games, more activities. But for the very first time, it's all about petting your pet taking care of it, feeding it, even cleaning up when it goes to the bathroom. It's all included in the play. Wait, I so it can be a puppy a or a cat, right? Or a cat, okay, or let's or get fish. to the next one. It can be so okay. many okay. different okay. things. Wow, that's very cool. Uh -oh. All right. I'm like this. So, yeah. I don't even know what it do is. You like so, drones? No, I love I'm drones. Be into it. You do? I love drones. You scare me a little. I'm but scared. this one is even better because <laughs> this is called, <laughs> this is called our Faction Skyfire Target Drone. So yeah, it flies. Oh, did that wrong. That's so okay. it flies you know it? by just tossing it if you don't have. Whoa. But I can also control it. What are you doing? Yep. This way. Now the point is to be throwing things at it. What? Because you want to try and hit it. I can make it do things like flips. 
Whoa, whoa, and okay, let's bring okay. it down. Okay. <laughs> you can and throw like something at it. So yes, the point is to take toys, anything you want, throw it. It's going to register it. Yep. So you just turn it on, toss it in the air. You want to give it a try? Or well, do you have to use that machine? You, you have don't to use have your phone. That's you just throw point. it. Yep. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Are you ready? It. Tell me if you're ready. You know it's not going to work. Yeah. No, it I'm is. It is. Oh look! <laughs> can I catch it? Or it? And that's it. So they really can you start, catch it? You can catch it and just flip it over and it will stop. Well, will it now it needs itself? to come down eventually. <laughs> oh, 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 God. Bye. Uh oh. So, you're breaking things, no, Oda. No, no, it'll come down. And Rhoda, no. do you have insurance? You can play this in the house. And what I love is that one kid oh, can be flying the drone, the other kid can be throwing All right, y'all, the drone. check out these go. toys. Go to day.com slash shop. We'll be back right after Never this. Coming the drone will not. Get ready. Tomorrow, legendary author Judy Blue. Oh, you know how much I love her. Yes. I'm going to hug her <laughs> and power food to improve your health. And a Tuesday, you're going to pick our outfits. Oh, that will be fun. Okay. Y'all, today's Monday. Tomorrow's Bye. Tuesday, which is also Tuesday. The avocado, from toast topping to sweet treats, even mac and cheese, this tasty green fruit is pretty much everywhere. But did you know the most popular variety, the Haas avocado, was developed right here in Southern California. So I came all the way across the country to find out how farmers and restaurant owners are making sure we're enjoying these for years to come. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. We call this right here the Avocado Tunnel of Love. <laughs> In the past 20 years, believe it or not, avocado consumption has tripled in the United States. Today, the average American eats eight pounds of these babies every year. I'm at Rancho Vasquez, one of the oldest avocado orchards in the country. Here, the Vasquez family grows several different varieties. Let's avocado check it out. Oh, welcome to Rancho Vasquez. Art? Yes, nice Art. Nice to meet you. How's it going, sir? Damien Vasquez. Damien, nice welcome to, to see you guys. Army veteran Art Vasquez has turned his love for avocados into a true family obsession. Four generations live together on this scenic ranch. Many of them work in the orchard and help run the business. I've never been to an avocado farm. Wow. So uh, it'll be gonna, a lot of fun. You guys gonna give me a tour? Absolutely. All right, let's go. Art's grandfather, Refufio Morones, 
moved to the U.S. from Mexico in the 1920s. He picked avocados and citrus fruit on several farms, but always dreamed of having his own orchard. When Art was seven, the family purchasing their first acre of this ranch. And that's when my grandfather, Rufufi, would start teaching me how to take care of the trees. That's when I, I really started loving picking. My brother and I would pick the avocados, take the avocados down to the town, knocking on doors, selling the avocados. Art put his passion for produce on hold to pursue a career in the auto parts industry. In 2002, he was able to buy the entire property, which was destined to be raised for new houses. We've taken it from 250 trees all the way up to 3,750 trees. This is something, a sustainable legacy that I can leave here and teach my children, grandkids, and the family how to work the earth, how to grow things organically. Art had also saved a piece of Golden State history. Avocados are native to Mexico, but some of the first avocado trees in the U.S. were planted in L.A. County in the mid-1800s. Henry Dalton, a wealthy trader who owned ranches in California, fell in love with the fruit during trips to Central America. In 1848, Henry planted the first avocado tree in Azusa. So when he moved to Los Angeles and he took over and bought Rancho Azusa, he knew there was fresh water coming from the Azusa Canyon. And so because of having the fresh water source and the awesome soil, he knew avocados would be great here. During a tour of the ranch, I got to see a living part of that history. What makes it special is one of the first planted avocado trees in the Western United States. This puppy is one of a kind. It's like us, Al. It's one of a kind, <laughs> okay. And it's still producing fruit? Still producing fruit. It produces anywhere between 500 to six, 700 pounds of fruit a year. Experts estimate this tree is more than 100 years old. It produces a type of avocado known as the fuerte, in Spanish meaning strong. It was the first avocado variety to thrive in the United States because it can withstand cooler temperatures. But in the 1920s, a new variety emerged in SoCal that would ultimately dominate the world market. A guy by the name of Rudolf Haas, he was actually a postal carrier, but his hobby was growing. So he had an orchard at his house about 20 miles from here, La Habra Heights. The Haas avocado was a total accident. An amateur farmer, Rudolph had purchased some mystery avocado seeds. When the tree matured, he was surprised by the dark, bumpy fruit it produced. And that really took off commercially because it has a thicker skin. So for shipping purposes, and it's an amazing tasting fruit. The Fuerte and many other avocados stay green when mature, but the skin on a Haas turns black when ripe, hiding any bruises. It didn't take off right away among consumers in the U.S. So it took a few marketing campaigns for Americans to embrace this creamy variety of the fruit. This fourth, put a little green in your red, white, and blue. Today, 80% of avocados grown worldwide are Haas. Now here, this is one of the first Haas trees commercially ever planted. We've got two Haas trees right here. Until the 90s, the majority of avocados consumed in the country were grown in California and weren't available year round. But all that changed in 1994. President Clinton made NAFTA the law today, linking the United States to Canada and Mexico in one large trading block. When NAFTA passed, avocados from Mexico became available everywhere, and folks could enjoy them anytime. Today, even named avocado toast a top trend of the 2010s. Avocado toast. I'm not sure how this happened, but there came a time in the past 10 years when people began to realize that their lives were not complete without it. Thanks to clever campaigns, new diet trends, and an abundant supply, avocado consumption has boomed in the last two decades, growing into a multi-billion dollar industry. Now, 90% of those avocados come from Mexico. However, this has led to major environmental impacts like deforestation. Rancho Vasquez wants to combat the negative effects of monoculture farming. As an organic orchard, they follow strict guidelines to help protect the land. How have the trees and what you grow 
tried to lessen the impact on the environment. We pick the weeds by hand. Are we weedy? Because it's all organic. Yeah. So we don't ever spray any weed kill or anything like that. The deer come and eat all the lower leaves and skirt the trees for us. Ah. And they turn that into natural manure. Now, when it comes to picking, avocados require a gentle touch. So we still do it the same high-tech way they did it 100 years ago. Wow. You and this is my grandfather's pole? pole right here. Really? Yeah, this is one of the old school ones. So you can pick any of these you want. Okay. So yeah, you just slide it right up till the avocado goes in the basket, and then you pull on the rope. There you go, you're almost there. Pretty difficult, you're doing pretty darn yeah. good, you know? A little bit further, and then pull the rope. There you there go, you is. got it. <laughs> good job. <laughs> He's a to catch. <laughs> Ta-da! There you go. My That's first a nice avocado. One too. It's going to take a week to a week and a half right now to ripen and let it get soft. How about going and tasting some? Yes, sir. We pick some about a week or so, so they'd be perfect for you. All right, let's do it. Believe it or not, there are more than 400 varieties of avocados. Rancho Vasquez in Azusa, California, sells six. The Fuerte, Hass, Lamb Hass, Reed, Pinkerton, and Gem. Each has a different shape, taste, and growing season. I've never seen such a, like, a round avocado. The ranch's avocados are prized by chefs and customers for their high oil content. That comes from the area's climate, nutrient-rich mountain soil, and secret farming techniques that have been passed down for generations. The higher the oil content, the better the tasting fruit is. Yeah. And then the longer it'll stay green. You can taste and see the difference with their organic hass. It just keeps it oh, really You can literally fresh. see the oil coming out of it. Yeah, so if you want to try just a little chunk, we'll give you a little chunk. Oh, that's great. Next up, the family favorite. Fuerte. Oh, a, a real, really a different flavor. Absolutely, absolutely. There's almost, it's almost like a saltiness and a creaminess in there. Aside from his wife's guac, Art's favorite way to eat avos is actually with honey. Ooh. It's called avocado dulce, which is avocado candy. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's fantastic. Isn't it great? I would have never thought of that. Guys, this is just amazing. What does it mean for both of you to to be owners of this of this legacy? This is a legacy I do want to leave. My family, my grandkids, Damien. And this will be around for, I'm hoping and praying, for at least another 100 years, you know? And what does it mean for you, Damien? Oh, it's like you said, just a place where history can keep going. Because the trees were here before us, and they're going to be here after us. So we're just kind of stewards of the land in the meantime. Let's share a little of this guacamole. Yes, sir. Yep. Let the chips fall where they may, as long as they've got guacamole on them.
Avila's El Ranchito is a Southern California staple that's been in business for more than half a century. They've got 13 locations and counting of this family-run chain, but no two restaurants are exactly the same. Every Avila's owner puts their own spin on the family's traditional Mexican recipes. But here at the Seal Beach Outpost, they claim to have the best guacamole. So I've come to learn their secrets. It's time to guac and roll. Hey there, wow, got a lot of folks here. The aunts, uncles, siblings, and cousins behind Avila's El Ranchito really treat their guests like family. This location is run by Elise Avila Smith, a third generation restaurateur. She credits the family's success to her grandma Margarita's hospitality. You know, she just focused on really what we focus on good, fresh food. Salvador and Margarita, or Mama Avila, immigrated from Mexico to the U.S. in 1958. How did they get into the restaurant business? My father had an opportunity to buy a restaurant and talked to my mother and decided, you know, this is a great opportunity. Salvador using his life savings to purchase the old restaurant property in Huntington Park. He turned to his six kids, including Elise's dad, Victor, for support. We would go after school and help them do whatever needed to be done. And my father was pretty much during the day taking care of the whole restaurant, and my mother was in the kitchen. So she was in the only one in the kitchen. And then, Grandpa Poldo was well, washing yeah. dishes. <laughs> Mama's traditional recipes have been passed down through many generations. They've come from way, way back in Mexico. When it first opened in 1966, Avila's was the only Mexican restaurant in the mostly white neighborhood. Many customers had no interest in Mama's traditional dishes, so she developed a strategy to draw people in. It seemed like natural for my mother to offer the people whatever they wanted, so it's more like a home. If they didn't have it on the menu, then my mother would go in the kitchen and make it anyway. Over the next three decades, the Avila siblings opened six new restaurants in Southern California. This expansion wasn't a coincidence. Americans at the same time were falling in love with Mexican food. In the early 80s, there were an estimated 2,500 Mexican restaurants in the U.S. Today, there are more than 60,000. I was busting tables here as a child. <laughs> Elise witnessed that growth as a kid, watching her dad expand the family business. So I grew up doing homework in a booth. On top of that, I grew up with my grandparents living one street over from me. So I grew up cooking with her for years and years. After college, Elise tried working in other fields, but she was always drawn back to the restaurants. I'd be working by day, you know, I worked for a magazine. And then my brother opened his first restaurant and I ended up serving tables at night. So no matter what I did, I kept ending up back in this business and I loved it. I realized that this was my passion, it's in my blood. How do you qualify to open up a, an Avila? Well, it's process, let me tell you. <laughs> Is it really? I had to work every position in the restaurant. So I washed dishes, I worked in the kitchen for a few years, but I've done it all. After proving herself for a decade, Elise opened her own Avila's in 2015. When I first opened my restaurant, I worked for several months from about six in the morning till midnight. And finally, I remember my dad and my brother came in for an intervention and said, you need to go home. You gotta sleep. <laughs> you gotta sleep. So I went home and they ran my restaurant for the night. And I knew with my dad and my brother here, there was nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Every Avila's restaurant is unique, reflecting the family member who owns it and the location. They have different decor and specialty menu items. Elise puts her own spin on the brand by offering an extensive tequila cocktail menu. Dad, I'm gonna make you a drink right now. Make it strong. <laughs> Salute, mija. Mm. But there are several dishes you're gonna find at every location. Avocados are crucial to many of the family recipes, including the signature guacamole and their beloved chicken soup. Tell me about Mama Avila's soup. It's that soup that feels like home to me, but it is a chicken breast and rice soup. We make it from scratch every morning, including the broth. We put fresh avocado, cilantro, onion, and tomato in it. And people go, and the first thing they do when they get off the plane is go to have some chicken soup. You mentioned avocado goes into the soup. Tell me about the importance of avocado. It's part of our culture. Bottom line is, Nobody wants to eat Mexican food without avocado and some guacamole. <laughs> so I'm curious, first you, Victor, what's the secret to a good guacamole? You have to make it, you know, almost really as on a daily basis, almost an hourly basis. 
It needs to be fresh. It needs to be well seasoned. And a little bit of love. I like to think I make a good guac, but I, <laughs> I'm sure I can learn from the best. So how about showing me how you guys do guac? Before making some guac, I enjoyed a cucumber margarita and got a taste of Mama's famous soup. That's great. I would never think about avocado in chicken soup. Oh my God. I can't take credit for that one, Al. That's all grandma. <laughs> all right, you ready to make some guacamole? You bet. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna dump some fresh garlic in here. Okay. This is a traditional mocha hete. From there, you're gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt Just on top. Just a little, top. Bit, Just a of little salt. bit of love. And then you're gonna use the top to go ahead and grind it in there. A mocha hete, a Mexican mortar and pestle, is made from volcanic rock. And it's the family secret to great guac. The rough surfaces help crush the ingredients, releasing their natural oils better than chopping them up with a knife. And we're gonna get in some fresh avocado. All right. And then you go ahead and mix that together. Now you gotta be gentle with the oh, avocado soft. With, with some be love. gentle, gentle. In go diced onions, lots of cilantro, and a good squeeze of lime juice. Keep on mixing there, and you got yourself some good, fresh guacamole. I'm gonna dig in here with you too, Al. Mm. Oh yeah. You make good guacamole, Al. <laughs> I've learned from the best. Elise, to be part of something like this, what, what does it mean? Honestly, I feel compelled to keep these beautiful recipes that are from, gosh, my great-great-grandparents running so that everyone that comes to our restaurant is able to taste them and to sit at our table and feel like family and just be a part of ours. Cheers. The ceviche bar a little different from a, a sushi bar. It's like a sushi bar, but more Mexican. Uh huh. <laughs> this lively food court is home to several family-owned hidden gems. In fact, here you'll find Holbush, a modern eatery renowned for its sustainable seafood. The chef behind this vibrant menu pairs flavors from his childhood in Mexico with the freshest of California fare. Gilberto Satina never thought he would dedicate his life to cooking but his summers spent on the Yucatan Peninsula would later inspire a bold move. Since I was a teenager, growing up in the coastal region, I would go diving with my cousins. We would dive down for octopus, uh, we'd get lobsters, we'd get sea snails, and then he would take that back and cook it. And that was one of the first times that I felt a direct connection to food because even back then, there was a disconnect, you right. know? Food came from the supermarket. And it was the first time I saw something that was like directly from the sea and you can cook it and eat it right away. So that kind of blew my mind. Gilberto immigrated to the U.S. when he was five years old. His father, Gilberto Sr., a former civil engineer, worked various restaurant jobs to support the family. How did your family transition from that kind of grassroots sort of food service to right. a real formal restaurant? It, it really was through the help of the nonprofit that, you know, operates Mercado La Paloma. This bustling market 
is run by Esperanza, or HOPE, a nonprofit dedicated to revitalizing South Los Angeles and helping first-time business owners. They gave us small business training, basic you know, restaurant health department training. They co-signed loans so my dad could purchase the equipment. It was my dad's dream to have a restaurant that represented our Mexican food, the food of the Yucatan, which is very distinct from other regions of Mexico. In 2001, Gilberto Sr. opened the family's first restaurant, Chichen Itza. The menu featuring traditional dishes like conchinita pibil, salbutes, and panuchos. Lo empezamos la mamá de Gilberto y yo, o sea, mi esposa y yo. En, al principio éramos dos personas nada más. They needed help, but Gilberto was reluctant to join the family business. I didn't want to cook. I didn't want to be in the kitchen because I, I grew up in a household where we always, you know, cooking was always used to make ends meet, like a lot of, you know, immigrant families. So when we opened the restaurant and my dad asked me to come along and help him out for six months, I was front of the house. Slowly I just discovered the cooking and that I enjoyed it and, you know, started learning from my dad. Even without formal training, Gilberto quickly learning the ropes, becoming a savvy businessman. Ten years in, Chichen Itza was thriving with dozens of employees. They even released a cookbook. Con el paso de los años, finalmente empezó a sentir la misma pasión que yo tenía por el negocio. After taking over at Chichen Itza, Gilberto was ready for a new challenge, one inspired by those summer boat trips in Mexico. Where does the name Holbosch come from? So Holbosch is a place. It's an island off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. He wanted to bring tropical, fresh from the sea vibes, along with an elevated experience, to diners in South Los Angeles. When Holbosch opened in the same market, it changed many perceptions of what Mexican food could be. We go outside of the realm of Yucatan and we do food from all different coastal regions of Mexico. Gilberto's fusion dishes allow the freshest fish to shine. Menu staples include seasonal ceviches and an octopus taco. His innovative cooking has wowed locals and critics alike. How does it feel to be nominated for a James Beard Award for this? Mm. After the shock, I think the first thing that I felt was extreme pride in my team. To a certain level, I guess it feels a little bit like validation because we're doing something slightly outside of the box. You look across Mexican cuisine and, and one of the commonalities is the avocado. Why does the avocado work so well across cuisines in Mexico, but especially your cuisine? The pairing of avocado goes extremely well with raw seafood preparations like ceviches and cocteles, and they're very bright, light, and acidic. I think avocado is the perfect complement because it gives it a little bit, you know, creamy richness. That delicate balance is best represented in the shrimp and scallop aguachiles. And I couldn't wait to try making it. So aguachile is super simple. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take, we're gonna make a marinade that's gonna cook or denature our scallops, right? So we're just gonna take some, some cilantro. Uh -huh. Next up, the chili. Serrano peppers bring the heat. Persian cucumbers cool it down. There's a pinch of salt, ice to prevent oxidation, and a squeeze of lime juice. Then the marinade blends for just about a minute. Now, we're just gonna take a bowl. Go ahead and put a couple of uh, spoonfuls of these beautiful Baja California Bay scallops. Ooh, look at those. Now, we're gonna pour the marinade and hold on to the spoon for stirring. Perfect, that's about right. We wanna let that marinate for at least five minutes. Gilberto takes his agua chile to the next level with an avocado rose. After pitting and peeling, it was time to get slicing. Your knife can be straight because your avocado is at an angle, and we're pull oh. cutting. You're just gonna do this, Al. Look. Okay. The key to a great rose? Super thin slices. We're hiring, you know. <laughs> okay. Now the next step. Hands, right? This we're gonna do this this motion. We're gonna fan out the okay. avocado, right? Mm -hmm. So, you see that? Oh, wow. Yeah, there you go. Looking good there. I think that's uh, good enough to roll. You're gonna start at the tip right here, okay. and you just roll this one like that. You see how that's 
forming a really big flower. Yes. This is a pretty advanced skill, but yeah. I think it's one worth practicing. Oh, yeah. And it's a nice party trick, you know? Sure. Impress your friends. Yeah. So, which one should we use? <laughs> that one. Made by the professional. Time to plate it up. That's looking beautiful. You're a lot neater doing this than I am. I'll yeah. take like a spoonful of them and just yeah. drop it on there and then arrange them on the plate. Ah, pro tip. And of course, the finishing touches. Wow. This is our scallop agua chile. And I helped make it. Can something this pretty taste as good as it looks? Mm, that looks like a good bite. Mm. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But yet so simple. Thank you, sir. Al, it was a pleasure. Fantastic. The Haas avocado may have started out as a lucky surprise, but for decades, its popularity has been no accident. The Mexican-American culinary traditions passed down through the years have made this delicious and nutritious fruit a staple for so many of us across the country. And thanks to generations of enterprising families, this bumpy green fruit is going to have a very long shelf life. This morning on Today Table, we are making a refreshing and citrusy bowl. Is that a word? Citrusy. citrusy. Yeah. No, a citrusy absolutely. bowl that is perfect for the summer. Well, our citrusy chef, Elena <laughs> Besser, is the host of the new series, Head of the Table, on Today All Day. Elena, good to see you. Hi. So great to be with my pals today. Yes. And this salad is right on time. It is right on time. And here's the thing. This summer, we want to be grilling, but we also want to be chilling. Oh. oh. You guys, I had to do it. So I... Where's my mic so I can <laughs> drop it? Drop that mic. Um, so we are making a delicious dressing that is a cumin lime dressing and mm -hmm. essentially what we have here is we have some honey you could swap that with agave mm -hmm. we have lime zest which we're adding in okay we've got some lime juice mm -hmm. we have some delicious cilantro Ooh. if you don't like cilantro you can swap it with parsley okay we have grated garlic nice. i know this seems like a lot but it's all going to be worth it i promise what about you you have, a little ginger this is jalapeno you could absolutely throw ginger in there if you want jalapeno we have cumin yeah. uh, chanel. Chanel. That's your face. jalapeno face yeah no, <laughs> right. your business and oh then, that's right jalapeno business <laughs> and then a little bit of chili powder <laughs> So what I like to do is I like to mix all of this together mm -hmm. first, and then I will slowly add in the oil to just emulsify why it. Why do you have to do that? Um, the reason why is just it's going to come together so much easier if you okay. slowly add in all of that oil. Mm. And this is going to turn into a luxurious dressing. But guess what? What? It's also our shrimp marinade. Mm. Oh, my gosh. It's a twofer. It's a twofer. That's where the chilling comes in. And don't forget the salt and mm -hmm. the pepper. we got to awaken those flavors. And, well, is it better? Could you make this ahead of time you and let it kind of? Sit there. Absolutely, and those flavors will intensify, mm -hmm. they'll meld together. We have half of that marinade here. We're going to brush it onto mm. some corn, okay. and then that's going to go right onto our grill. If you are someone like me and you don't own a grill, uh, you can just use a grill pan like we're showing you right here, and that's just going to Does it still cook. give it the, the same taste? Yes, it does. You are able to get that nice smoky yeah. charred taste. Mm -hmm. You'll be pleasantly surprised by okay. how much of that flavor you'll still be getting. Okay. This goes Ooh, about a like minute no on each side. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it's coming how through. Long? Um, about like a minute on each side, probably like cook? five minutes total. Oh. You'll get that char, but That's also nice. you can eat raw corn and it's absolutely delicious okay. anyway. Um, this ends up going into the shrimp. We it, don't want it in for too long because we have lime juice in there, no, so, so we don't cook? want to okay. cook it. Exactly. Okay. We're not making ceviche here. Right. Got but it. then after that, you're going to thread it onto some skewers. You're going to soak the skewers? Yeah. Al, you'd think you know how to cook or something. <laughs> I mean, right. seriously. For about 30 so, minutes, I believe. <laughs> yes. So like, you're going to thread it onto the skewers just to make And this is fun. You could serve it on the skewers, mm -hmm. or you could cook it without the skewers. I love that you right. did the double skewer because I've made the mistake of not. And, and then it's flipping all over the place. It's running around, and you want it to stay put and get that even char. So we're going to cook this about two minutes per it's side. So now and you've left your corn cool We've left off. our corn. We let our corn cool off. We cut it off the cob. I yeah. like putting it a little bowl in here, mm -hmm. set it down. It makes it really easy so it's easy to balance. We add in our mm. 
red onion. Uh -huh. And if onion, red onion's too intense for you, what mm -hmm. I like to do is I'll just soak it in some ice water and it oh. will take out that astringency. Oh, that's good to so know. So it ends up mellowing it out. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna add some diced avocado. That's a, really, that's a nice tip there. It's fun, yeah. right? Pro and tip. How long, how long do you have to soak two. it? Just like a couple minutes. I would say otherwise like five it's minutes would be the best. And avocado, by the way, check out Al's new episode on his show, Family Meal, the avocado oh. episode. Yeah. Award winning, yeah. award winning show. <laughs> award winning show. And then we have some feta as okay. well. Gosh. And guess what? What? Yep. More the dressing. marinade and dressing. Wow. So we, it's a threefer. It's, really? it, it turns out it's, a it's not just a twofer, it's a threefer. <laughs> so we are adding in the rest right. of that. Mm -hmm. We're hitting it with a little bit. Here, I'm just going to turn these. Yeah. Let's see. Look, we're already Boom. getting Take a nice long. char Lana, on this there. this is so good. And we add a little bit of salt. You like it? And then, oh, my gosh. Yes, Al, because we want it to fall from the bottom so it will evenly shirt. distribute. Fantastic. <laughs> and then you're going to serve this up. You could either leave it on the skewer. <laughs> you could Take it off the skewer, and you know what? Oh my gosh. One more thing. Why what? not throw a little tortilla chip on there? Oh, Some yeah. Extra Elf, you crunch. had a plate. I like yeah, what, put that no, Yeah, I know, but I had this one. plate. This, this is one's the beauty. <laughs> why would I go for that try, plate? Try that. I go for this plate. This salad, really it's, it's like always great thing. when you're here. It is so we fun to be here. It's, it's awesome so to have some food. Well, everything you make together. is yummy. That's right. <laughs> if you love chips and guacs and your today's Masterclass Monday, it's for you. We're talking avocados and mangoes, which can be challenging to choose and, and to use. Yeah, exactly. And here to share her tricks is Gabby Dolkin. She's an Instagram star, cookbook author, creator of the popular food blog, What's <laughs> Gabby Cooking? And Gabby's in her L.A. kitchen up bright and early I with know. us. Hey, Gabby, good morning. Hi guys, good mama, morning. How are should you? Should we call you good morning, yes, Mama? We, How's that babe? babe? She's good. She's right behind the camera, just staring at me. Oh, she's filming. <laughs> she's working camera She's a one. genius. Good. She's seven months old. Gosh, she oh, is adorable. And look at her little legs. Cutie. Look at those rolls. <laughs> um, okay, let's get to cooking. I bet. I bet your babe loves avocados. They're so good, but they're kind of hard to choose. How do yeah. we know if they're ripe? Okay, so I literally wrote an entire cookbook on avocados 100 years ago. So mm -hmm. I like to buy my avocados when they're like this. They're like bright green, they're rock hard, they feel literally like rocks, and then I let them ripen on my counter. If you buy them like this and you need them faster, I like to stick them in a brown paper bag with, an with a banana or an apple, and that ripens it. And when they're ripe, they look a little bit more like this. They're a little darker, they're a little softer. When you want to eat your avocado, it should have just a slight bit of give to it, kind of like the palm of your hand right here. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know it's ready to go. Gabby, we did And if you want to extend it yeah. from there, pop it in the fridge for a couple days. Yeah, that's fridge. a good thing. I think it keeps it for five days, your note said. But also, we did something this morning that was a little controversial. We put avocado in our cereal. Have you ever heard of anything I like that? I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. Um, no. <laughs> okay. No. I don't know if I would do it, but I I'm on the right side of history. That. I trust Gabby. All right, yeah. Gabby, before we get any further, let's so we're gonna make mango to a mango salsa. And how do you pick a good a good mango? So similar to an avocado, when you when you buy a mango, sometimes they're rock hard and they're, yeah. they're different varieties also. Like we have a different variety in my kitchen than you guys have right there on yeah. set. But when they're rock hard, also like an avocado, give them a couple days. You can put them in that same bag with the banana and an apple. Good trick. When they're ripe, this one is all yellow, mm. and it should also have just a tiny bit of give to it. Again, like the this part of your palm, mm -hmm. and it should smell really fragrant. Like mm -hmm. when it smells it's fragrant, it's ready. ready to go. Okay. Okay. So you made this. Del Sorry, this is delicious <laughs> avocado and mango salsa with salmon. I know my toe's okay. Everything's fine. Show us what you made. Okay, so I, this is what we're making quickly. It's this beautiful salmon. Mm -hmm. When you're seasoning salmon, I just buy like a little filet. I season it heavily mm. with any of your favorite seasonings. I just use my favorite. It's called Gabby's Go-To. Salt and pepper, 425 mm. degree oven for like 10 to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to turn on your oven, you can easily do it in a grill. You would just do indirect, it would, you'd put it on indirect heat mm -hmm. and shut the grill and cook it same amount of time. So cut that, show us so how to cut that mango. that's done, mm -hmm. yes, we're going to cut the mango. Okay, so there's a huge pit in this situation. Yes, you are going sure to hold is. it, you can hold it up like this. Mm -hmm. so you and you're going to take mm -hmm. your knife and just mm -hmm. run it right down, like just slightly off the center so you don't hit the pit. Turn it the other way oh. and do the exact same thing. If you mm -hmm. hit, if you cut it a little bit too close to the center and you hit the pit, just move your knife out a bit. And then from here, what we're mm -hmm. going to do is take our knife and very gently score the like the mm -hmm. inside part of the mango mm -hmm. both ways. 
like kind of like tic tac toe, mm -hmm. just like this. And then you're gonna pop it out mm -hmm. and take your knife. I'm using like a fillet, like a fish fillet knife. This is what you would use to take the skin off of a fish. You could also use the chef's knife, anything you want. And you're just gonna carefully Look at that. run it wow. on the bottom, mm -hmm. just like this. Yeah, and you know what? Hoda is a mango all of expert. Your mango. Yeah, that's how I give it to what? my kids. I call those mango pops. I she pop pops it out it and, and just lets them just eat, eat it straight it. from the skin. Mm -hmm. That's I sh like how old does Poppy my Poppy need to be in order to have a mango? I think seven she needs, months acceptable. She needs some teeth, just one or two. one tooth, <laughs> one tooth. Okay. <laughs> Same thing with the avocado. When you're doing an avocado, you kind of just spin it mm -hmm. around your knife, twist it open, mm -hmm. and then you're mm -hmm. also just gonna score the mm -hmm. same thing. And instead of popping it open like you did the mango, you're gonna pop it open, or you're gonna scoop it out with a spoon. And, mm -hmm. how do you like and what do you do to season those two uh, Yeah, fruits? show us how you make your salsa. So the salsa, we're just gonna put in some green onions. You could also do chives. Mm -hmm. um, I have, look at these like super cool green zebra tomatoes mm -hmm. from the farmer's market. Mm, those beautiful. are gonna go in. And lime. A little bit of lime juice, a little bit of pepper, and then if you're not feeding this to kids or whatever, you could add a little jalapeno, yum, habanero, yum. just to give it a little bit of spice. Yummy. And then you just give this a well, stir delicious. and top it on anything. But you, if you hate fish, put it on chicken, yes. put it on steak, put it on whatever you want. Okay. Tofu. Looks great. It's all Gabby. gonna be. Gabby, thank you thank so phenomenal. much. Thank you so much, so Gabby. Good. If you're looking for something tasty to whip up this weekend, we have got you covered. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer with a delicious meal that uses just six ingredients. Good morning, Joy. Morning. Hey, guys. I have something so special for your weekend menu, and it's sort of like a mix and eat situation. It comes together in five minutes and it is good it is saucy it's smoky i think you're really gonna love it and what i love about it is you gotta it's kind of a hack in that you just get a a, a, a supermarket rotisserie chicken and you go to town get us started okay so i'm calling it my chipotle pulled chicken in avocado boats and we're starting with the pulled chicken so here i have one and a half cups of shredded chicken you could use any leftover chicken that you have in the fridge but what i did was took the easy way out Picked up a rotisserie chicken. You take the skin off, and then just, just like that. using your hands, <laughs> Sometimes they do. yeah, you're just gonna shred it up just mm -hmm. like this until you have a great big pile. So let me move this over. Now comes the easy part. I have jarred salsa. This oh. is just a half a cup, and you know you're the boss of your salsa. You can use mild, medium, spicy, whatever you prefer. And the nice part about the salsa is it does all the chopping for you. There's chopped peppers. There's mm -hmm. chopped onions in it. Here, this is sort of the star of the show. This is um, chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. So I have two of them chopped up. And I want to mm -hmm. show you what they look like because you could buy them in the grocery store in jars. Oh. And you're going to take – look oh, at – see these peppers? Perfect. So these are dry, are they spicy? smoked jalapenos. Well, you know – not so spicy. It has a little bit of heat. So if you're sensitive to heat, I would start with one, mm -hmm. and um, then you could always add a second. I like but to add a third, truth be told. 
It's so smoky and so tangy. And now what I do is add an extra teaspoon of the adobo sauce oh. right inside. Mm -hmm. And this is where I said it's just a toss and mix. This is going to come together. Wow. And if you're looking for a creamier chicken salad consistency, it's also really nice to add two or three tablespoons of a light mayo or a Greek yogurt. Hmm. It dilutes the, the flavor a little bit, mm -hmm. but it makes it super creamy. And then you might want to add an extra pepper in there <laughs> and a little bit more adobo sauce. But the, so the pepper here, has so much flavor that it's, I feel like it doesn't take much to go a long way. You are so right, Dylan. And now and here's I've the just, superfood part. Okay, guys. We have an avocado packed with potassium, packed with fiber. I split it in half. I took out the pit. That and is a perfect just avocado. Going it is a perfect no avocado. brown or anything. I got so lucky this morning. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> you don't really know until you then, get into it. And what I like to do to take it over the top, let me get, I'm going to add a little bit Ooh. of extra adobo sauce. And I'm going to show you, I have some finished right mm -hmm. over here. Look at this. Wait. Oh, this looks so yummy. It It is so out of this world. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. And then I noticed and on the I, side there, you've got, if you have some extra, you, you've got something else you could do with it. Yeah, so now I'm going to show you a little bit of cilantro. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. I just love cilantro. I know Me some too. people are team cilantro, some not so much. I'm going to show you how to make a wrap now with it. So if you want to use that same, whoops. That same flavorful chipotle chicken, mm. you could then take the avocado. You see what I've done here? Another uh -huh. beautiful bright green one. I got super lucky. I'm going to smash it and spread it on a whole grain tortilla. Now I take my... Hey, mice. Joy, I love how... Mice who's pulling, pulling, who's away. pulling that stuff away? I love that. <laughs> you That's know it. who it is. Is that Ian? <laughs> Ian Bowers in the house. <laughs> you know, when you guys um, put me back on the plaza last week and the week before, Ian thought he was retired. He, he uh, you know, Not handed so in his NBC badge and then suddenly he was called back. <laughs> so now I'm going to roll this up. Oh, that is so easy. Wow, look at that. It could not be easier. I'm going to slice it up. Oh, that looks so So whether you have it. your boats or a wrap. There you go. Look at that. You are and ready to is. eat. And Joy, that's a wrap for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, Ian, Can just I pull just that very out, quickly too. Say, oh, sure, go I'm, ahead. I'm going to say happy birthday to my hero, my heart, my dad, 83 Aww. years old. Aww. And I'm going to tell you, he is so fit. He still beats all my brothers on the basketball court. Swims wow, every day. Wow, good for him. Wow. Are you and we're slapped? playing the Smucker's birthday you. music. Look at that. Very quick. <laughs> Happy birthday. Nice. He's not 100, though. Okay, let's just make sure He's that's not clear. 100, but he is on a mission to make it onto that Smucker's jar. All right. Thanks so much, Joy. <laughs>
You know, Adam, as the host of The Food That Built America, well, now he's out with a new show, biting into the most memorable foods of an iconic decade. It's called Adam Eats the 80s. That's a great title. <laughs> he's here to tell us all about it and, of course, do some throwback cooking for us. Adam, I think the 80s, Beef stroganoff was a meal that my mother made. Mm -hmm. Classic. And like, when I think of the 80s, and that was like kind of a fancier meal, yeah. but it really sort of in in encapsulated like 80s food. We're going to make a classic here in a minute, but tell me more about the show. So basically, yeah, like you nailed it. We looked through one of the most dynamic decades in American history through the prism of food. Everyone's done fashion and fads and big shoulder pads and big hair and leg warmers and Jennifer Beals off the shoulder. Yeah, flash dance. And sweatshirts. But, remember, but what was the food? Because like there was Hot Pockets, oh, there was yeah. the microwave, the proliferation of the microwave. So, yeah, that's exactly it. You nailed it. You had kids had agency because you had latchkey kids because you had two parents right. working. Right. You had Reagan saying you could advertise directly to children so you had a proliferation of sugared cereals. You didn't eat eggs because tires. of Nancy Reagan and the drugs. Exactly. Because you're bringing drugs. Right, exactly. You had the microwave so those latchkey kids could cook. Right. But also, you had ranchers carrying over massive debt into the 80s. They sold off beef. Beef became more expensive, so chicken started appearing on oh, our fast right. food menus. That's right. And people started pivoting, getting a few more European so flavors in there. What a great idea for a show. Thank you. What did you bring for us today? This so a, this is my version of another 80s classic, Sloppy Joe's. Uh, you saw this on the lunch menu? Mm. Sloppy it's Joe's? Fantastic. You were you so like excited. I think they should like this back in the day. If yeah. only. If yeah. only. Yeah. Let's exactly. let, well, Adam, Adam, start cooking like while, while we talk. Go ahead and, and we'll get it. Are you making, is this a chili? Is that what? Well, no, it's essentially similar to it. Not, not different than taco meat. We have some ground beef. We have some oil browning in there. You want to help me with yeah, this? Yeah, So sure. add the onion first. Okay. Yep. And what we'll do is we'll sweat that. We'll add a little pinch of salt. And we'll stir that. When the onions start getting a little bit translucent, we'll start adding in. You can swap this out for turkey. Is that an 80-20? Uh, yep, 80-20, Chuck. You could add uh, turkey. You could even do ground chorizo if you want to change the mm -hmm. flavor mm -hmm. or a combination. There you go. Break it up with there. Yep. Once the meat starts to brown, I guess... Uh, Roughly about five minutes, we'll move on. We have um, cumin. We have, obviously, you want to add a little bit of uh, chili powder. We want to add a little bit of pepper. Um, but all the great flavors that you normally find in, like, taco seasonings. So we have some that's already cooked down. You can see it's simmering away here. So what we're going to do is how comfortable you smash and garlic. I, I'm, I, I, well, I'll do it, but how, you, how do you do it? Okay, use so the, 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 like use that? The, yeah, what you want to do mark? is, yeah, exactly. You want to make sure that it's stable. And then just okay. press. Mine's a little more violent than that. Okay. And how much do you have to break it down? Just that much. Actually, okay. you could you could break it even with your hands. The larger pieces will prevent it from burning. You remember Hamburger Helper? Oh, yes. oh my God. Helps your hamburger make a great Did meal. Did it have these great spices or not so much? This is a very no, probably, elevated version. Probably, okay. probably not. I'm going to guess that they didn't. So we have these spices. Go ahead. Drop it on in there. And again, we want to make sure that it, uh, it browns but not burns. Burned That's garlic good. is an awful, awful You guys are eating it. Just tell me how it is. It we got two minutes left. Are there fruits in here? Yes. Well, that, that, that's exactly it. So now we're also going to put in a can yep. of tomatoes okay. and all of the juice, and we want them to break up, and that's also going to get that beautiful that moisture, soupy yep. uh, exterior. So now all we right, have now our we corn build. chips. Yep. Exactly. Wow. So um, I had um, chili Frito pie at the Texas State Fair. Yep. Blew me away. Love it. So basically we're going to take the uh, sort of sloppy Joe mixture yep. and we'll layer it on top of this. The best way to do it is just sort of dot it, spread it out. We have a pound of cheese. I mean, you can eat this as a separate appetizer. Oh, yeah. This is yeah, this, this, this is going is, on the sandwich. This is just joy. That yes, is amazing. Absolutely. Yes. This is, yeah. This it's a time warp when you eat that, right? Oh you go God. back to the 80s, that, the, that mm, flavor, right? then it's elevated with the onion. Exactly. Yeah. So then we'll put a little bit on the sandwich oh, and we'll top it. it with sliced avocado. Oh, see, it's fancy. You got the pickled onions. Exactly. Some mm. pickled red onions, which you could, you could buy them. You could make them super easily. Yeah, this is not the sloppy Joe we had at the No, no, no this is school. not your cafeteria sloppy Joe. Oh, my mm. gosh. We gotta get to these onion rings. We gotta get to the onion rings. Okay, we gotta get to the onion rings. Okay, so they're outstanding. Okay, so really simple uh, smoked paprika, uh, smoked paprika onion rings. Mm -hmm. Now it may look like a lot of smoked paprika. It's a very strong flavor, but it actually it's infused in the egg, in the panko, in the flour, Fantastic. and when it cooks, it actually gets a little sweeter. That's so a, yeah, right. I didn't. Like the best onion ring I've ever I had. That's the really? secret. Yeah. It's so thin. Yeah. It's so crunchy. That's huge. So we got Vidalia onions, super sweet. We're going to use fair. a mandolin, so it always comes out in level. And I like the, using the guide because you can see, first of all, you're always going to get a uniform slice, okay. but also you're going to protect your fingers. Yeah. So then what you want to do with any breading station, you go one flour to egg, the other hand egg to breadcrumb. So you can take the, the right hand, I guess, we'll go flour. Yep. 
to the egg. Oh gosh, this is so good. Because this if you bad. don't, you'll you'll end it is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Really? The best onion ring ever. You know, you add onion ring and the onion compliment. immediately comes, yeah. it falls yeah. apart. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly and it's thick and it's just, you don't really it's want that. Right. What kind of oil are you using? All so you want to make sure you use um, any kind of oil with a high smoke point. I prefer peanut. Keep talking, guys. Hits Do me a favor and check out the show. It's fantastic. We're back with a great chicken franchise. And of course, you can find all the recipes at today.com slash food. to teach kids Please. about the importance of traditions and culture is through family recipes and that's exactly what our friend Marcela Valladolid is doing in her debut children's cookbook. What is it what is it called? Tell me what your what it's called. Cocinando on Cookster. I love it. It's a collection of Mi Familia's recipes. Yes. And today she's making one of those recipes in the book. Marcela, we're yes. so happy to have you in person. Yes. yes. So welcome in. Yes. And our. this is really a book for your daughter. Is that right? It really is. She always used to make me read cook cook cookbooks to her at night, but she's not in school yet, which means we only speak Spanish at home with the kids yeah. until they go to school. So mm -hmm. I would be translating in real time and I was like, I need to write a book for her that's written in English Brilliant. and Spanish. Oh my God, so you're incredible. Here okay. we are. So, so we're so starting with some flautas. flautas. Yes, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, which is kind of weird for me because I celebrate Hispanic yeah. Heritage like every day of yeah. my life. Yeah. I, yes. But thank you for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> well, also thank you for coming to cook. This no, is absolutely. So flautas. And this book is about all those little tips, right? So flautas are rolled up taquitos, and people usually don't know like the simple tips. Like if you warm up a tortilla, it's much easier for you oh. to roll it up oh. without it breaking. So you can microwave. Yeah, that makes sense, right? It, it's that, just so easy. And, and that's then, just shredded chicken? It's Is that just it? shredded chicken okay. that you can get from the rotisserie chicken okay. from the market if you don't right. want to boil it yourself. Right. Like make your life easy. And okay. you don't need to put anything on it to make it stick. You just kind of. You don't. And, and you the trick the... with flautas is if you're not an experienced flauta maker, like the women in Mexico, they don't need to do the toothpick thing. They figure it out. God knows how they make it stick, but it's right. thick. But if you're not a professional flauta maker, so you use the toothpicks. And, and you can fry the toothpicks? Oh, absolutely. You just have to make sure. In? Yeah, that's oh, really hot oil. But there you go. And you just leave those in there for a couple of minutes, and maybe we'll take them out so we don't burn your studio. Okay, I have a crazy question. Yeah. Can you air fry flautas? Absolutely, 100%. So my idea would be you brush it with a little bit of oil, throw it in the air fryer, and that's it. Wait, I am going to try to air fry, fry a flauta you, tonight. You, you can. You can. I'll tell you what you can do. You can bake or air fry it tortilla chips too, but we'll get there in a second. Okay. You're going right. to love it. So okay. now we make the rest. So another thing about the book is introducing folks and kids to like the traditional stuff, but not too spicy. Mm -hmm. A pico de gallo salsa or salsa mm -hmm. bandera because it has the colors of the flag. You've got some tomatoes that are seated, some onion, mm -hmm. cilantro for sure, mm -hmm. jalapeno, and you can mm. measure like... But do you do the jalapenos without seeds? You do without the seed. The spice is actually in the vein, oh. not so much oh. the seed. Oh. Yeah, so you take out the vein. And if you don't like spice, just do a little sprinkle of jalapeno. My mom's trick, oil in the salsa. Oil and, and yeah. lemon. And lemon and, and a little pepper. salt and pepper, and that's it. And you've got your beautiful salsa. That's okay. beautiful. Yeah, and then oh, to dress them up, Yum. another great one for my mom, always dress the lettuce. A little oil, a little vinegar. 
brings mm. out all of the flavor, mm. and then you just dress it, and then go Mexican with like a big, yeah. huge, you know, and salad on top almost. The whole thing, and okay. you've got some beautiful Let's ones try, here. Here, here's some flautas. I'll dress these. And what do you add on top? Caita cheese? Yeah, so dress lettuce, like that's one of the things I teach in my cooking class. Mm. Always dress the lettuce in these Mexican antojitos, a little mm. cotija mm. cheese, and Mexican crema because why not? Because mm. it's so delicious. Mm. Come on over, bring your Wait, flautas, ladies. It's so mm. crunchy and yummy. Okay, and you were having like a, like a heart attack because we baked the chips, which I, think I it's love. It's a brilliant idea. Yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing tortilla chips are awesome, but if you bake them, you might be like a little more willing to put them on the dinner it's table, it's right? It's good, like good for your kids. And here's what's great about this recipe like you brush them with oil and Mask, you bake them. What is this? It's a um, corn tortilla. You it has take to a be tortilla corn. and cut it up. Okay. Yeah, you cut it up. You can cut it up into stars. You can use okay. cookie cutters. You can okay. have so much fun Wait, with that's this. That's so cute. So much fun. I do it for Christmas. Christmas and do Christmas shapes and make like a tortilla chip Christmas. Chip. Of but anyway, that's do. a different. I love you. That's what, a different. Segment. What is that spice you're putting on? Anything you want. I'm using chili lime powder, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of rosemary. Mm. That's the thing about mm. homemade chips. You can season them with whatever you want. And so how, simple. So they're brushed with oil, seasoned, and then you put them in the oven. 350, 15, 20 minutes that's until it? they're nice and crisp. You want to okay. make sure they're dried out. Nobody likes soggy tortilla chips. Now you're gonna make us a little guac. Simplest thing in the world. All of these recipes come from my mom, which is what's so special about the book. The secret ingredient what? to guac. Pause is distilled white vinegar. What? That's why you guys were eating it and you were like, oh Wait, my God. What? It I've brings, never heard that. It's it's how my mom used to make it when I was a kid. So and li and li is that lime? lime? And yeah, and then you just mash it in salt. Lime and that's, vinegar. that's all you need for a good what about guacamole. What about cilantro, no? You can, but, but I'm a purist when it comes to guacamole. And you don't put tomatoes, I'm which is interesting. You can, this, you certainly can. You, you can find like, Pomegranate seeds, mango, yeah. anything around yeah. across it's, Mexico. Like way. people are getting adventurous. But for me, guacamole is just this with some baked chips that are seasoned, and that's it. This mm. is amazing. So good, right? We love these. Mm. Thank you. Today, all day, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada <laughs> is saying bye-bye to boring avocado toast with two of her favorite avocado-packed recipes. Then she'll banish sad desk lunches forever with a savory turmeric oatmeal and crispy cauliflower popper. Hey guys, it's Sama. I am so excited to share two favorite recipes with you today. They both use an avocado and they're both from my new cookbook. So let's get hashtag cooking. First up, we're gonna make my avocado cream pasta and then next for dessert, because we always have to have it, my avocado brownies. And yes, I did say brownies. This avocado cream pasta is literally one of my most popular recipes on my blog and I honestly think it's because you just need a blender to make this super luxurious sauce. I'm just gonna slice these tomatoes in half. You can totally leave them whole to roast them if you'd like. But I'm just gonna slice them so that we can get that nice caramelization around the edges. Now I'm just gonna arrange them onto my baking sheet. I've lined this with parchment paper. These rogue ones wanna be left behind, but they won't be. Now I'm just gonna drizzle with a little bit of olive oil and season with some salt and pepper and red pepper flakes. Olive oil, some red pepper flakes, a little salt and then some pepper. We don't wanna roast these tomatoes for too long, only about 10 to 15 minutes. If you do roast them for too long, it will dry out those juices, and we definitely don't want that. We want a juicy tomato. Okay, looking pretty good. Now that my tomatoes are done, I'm just gonna leave them here to hang out while I prepare my pasta. All right, very important. Please promise me you won't forget to salt your pasta water, okay? Just promise me. I'm gonna salt it, and now I'm gonna add my pasta. Straight in there. And while this pasta is cooking, I bet that I can make the sauce in the time it takes for it to be done. All you need is a blender to make this super creamy sauce. So if you've ever made a smoothie and you have a blender at home, you can make this pasta sauce. So, the base of it is our avocados. I'm using an avocado and a half for this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. Just slicing my avocados. 
making sure I also don't slice my finger in there. All right, we're gonna scoop some of this avocado out. Look at how ripe and pretty that is. Go straight in there. Gonna pit this. This avocado is what's gonna add that super creamy element to this pasta. Now I'm gonna move on to my lemon, adding the juice of one full lemon in here. Make sure I catch all the seeds. This lemon is gonna really make it tart and acidic and bring out that zing, make it very bright and fresh. I'm gonna add some fresh basil and raw garlic. Yes, I'm using raw. It's gonna be really punchy and really bright. And I love garlic. There we go. A Little bit of olive oil. Just a bit. And now I'm gonna season it to taste with some salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Salt in there. Add as much chili flakes as you'd like. I love spice, so I'm going in with a lot. But you make your own choices, okay? Now, just to help everything get moving in the blender, we're gonna add a little bit of cold water. Make sure it's cold because we don't wanna brown the avocado. Just a bit, and I can add more and adjust to get it to the right consistency that I like. Now it's time to blend. Perfect. It is so luxe, you will not even believe it. Look at that. So creamy. Did you see that? I made that pasta sauce and my pasta is done. Super quick. We love a blender recipe. Now I'm just gonna spoon my pasta out. Before I add this creamy sauce to my pasta, I'm gonna grab one more thing. Just grab some arugula from the fridge. I love adding this to this pasta because it gives this really nice peppery bite to it. All right, time to assemble. Got my sauce, gonna add this into my pasta. You might think you put cream in this, but you didn't, I promise. I'm just gonna really stir that in. I'm gonna add my tomatoes. Just a little burst of something sweet in with this avocado cream sauce. Now I'm just gonna mix in my arugula. What's great about this pasta as well is that you can eat it immediately, but you can also refrigerate it to have as a pasta salad the next day. We love a leftover. We love a meal prep situation. This is both of these. All right, time for me to plate this for myself. Is that too much? There's never too much. <laughs> What is a portion? <laughs> I have my tomatoes that I reserved just for this moment. Place them on top. Make it look really nice, a little pop of color. And now, some freshly ground black pepper and a pinch of flaky sea salt. And that is it. But one last thing. Can't forget to take a photo. I didn't do all of this for nothing. I love this. I'm gonna frame this. I'm gonna put this on my wall. I think it's fair to say that it's time for me to eat. Okay, here I go. Gotta get some arugula, some pasta in there. Okay. Mmm. I love myself. <laughs> it's so creamy, you honestly would never know that there's no cream or butter in this. It's crazy.
We are so used to thinking of using avocado in savory recipes, but plot twist, they're amazing in sweet recipes too, especially when chocolate is involved. And that is where my avocado brownies come in. I've already preheated my oven to 350 degrees and now I'm gonna prepare my pan. I love parchment paper, I live for parchment paper. I've already greased my pan here with some coconut oil and now I've created a little strip of paper that I can just lay in to my pan. Stick it down because the coconut oil really helps it stick. And then I've created these nice little flaps which are gonna make it super easy to remove the brownies from the pan when they're done baking. I've got great news for you and for these brownies, everything comes together in a blender. Like you could make a smoothie, but don't. Make these brownies instead. All right. We're starting with my avocado, star of my show. Gonna slice this in half. Great way to use avocados when you're sick of the guacamole, when you're sick of all the savory things that you've been making with it. What's really nice about using an avocado in this brownie recipe is that it's super creamy and rich, so it actually serves as a really nice butter replacement and you cannot even taste it. I promise. All right, avocado is in. And time for the rest of my ingredients. I'm using two eggs here. And two. Crack that straight in there. And now I'm gonna add some creamy peanut butter. You can definitely use an almond butter if you'd like, but I love peanut butter. So we're starting with all of our wet ingredients first. Gonna sweeten this up with some maple syrup and some coconut sugar as well. And then a little bit of vanilla extract. So now I'm just gonna blend everything together here and then get to work on my dry ingredients later. I'm using an almond flour for this recipe because I think it's really nice and dense and cakey, which is gonna be really delicious with these brownies. Add my almond flour in there. Now, we're gonna use a cocoa powder. Make sure you get an unsweetened cocoa or a cacao powder. We want it to be really pure here with nothing added because we've already sweetened it with some coconut sugar and maple. Oh. Now some baking soda. Isn't it so convenient? Like, just a blender and brownies are the result? Sign me up. A little bit of salt. This is gonna be really nice to bring out that sweetness and also balance out that chocolate. And now, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna blend. You may need to scrape down the size of the blender to get it there, but just be patient with yourself and your blender. All right, we're looking really good. Now I like a little bit of a sweeter brownie, so I'm gonna fold in some chocolate chips. You don't have to do this if you don't want, but if you like joy and happiness, I would highly recommend it. I'm gonna reserve a few chips on top before baking so we can just get that nice aesthetic before it goes into the oven. You know how I operate. I'm gonna fold this in. How easy was this? Can we take a moment to address how easy this is? And now all I'm gonna do is transfer it into my pan, which I've prepared already. Look at that. You would never know there was an avocado in here. We put a whole fruit in these brownies and you can't even taste it, I promise. I smooth the batter out in the pan. Make sure it's evenly distributed. That looks pretty good. And now for my chocolate chips. Gonna add them on top. Less is not more here. That's my philosophy when it comes to chocolate. Less is just not more. In fact, more is more. All right, so now we're ready for the oven. and they are done. You can tell that the brownies are done when they start to pull away from the sides of the pan a little bit and a knife inserted in the center comes out clean. I'm so excited about this. And again, I love parchment paper. This is so easy. I'm just gonna lift them straight out of the pan like this. Pretty good form, huh? 
I'm gonna slice these, big piece for myself. I'm gonna top it with some ice cream and peanut butter because I love myself and I deserve this. It's such a clean cut too. Who needs a gym, <laughs> right? <laughs> I need a bigger scoop. <laughs> All right. And now I'm just gonna top it with a little peanut butter drizzle. I just melted this in the microwave for a little bit so it gets nice and melty and easier to drizzle. I think this looks perfect. Pretty good. Now, last step. Just gonna top it with a little bit of flaky sea salt. Partially for taste, partially for aesthetics. I just have to take a picture of this. I need to document it. It looks too good not to. Okay. That little drip right there? Is that a joke? Okay. Now I need to try this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm gonna just leave. <laughs> it's so crazy. There's no butter or oil in these brownies, but they taste so decadent and rich. Who gave me permission to do this? Avocado really came through today. Lunch is sort of that lost meal in between breakfast and dinner where you don't really know what quite to do with yourself. So in order to make your lunch exciting, I'm gonna hashtag end sad desk lunches and show you two of my favorites. First up, I'm gonna show you how to make some delicious spiced breaded cauliflower poppers and my favorite savory oatmeal with caramelized onions. To be honest, cauliflower is truly in everything these days. We see it in pizza, we see it in pasta, it's probably in ice cream, I don't wanna know about it. But the best way to use cauliflower is in these cauliflower poppers because you know what? They can literally do it all. They're a great snack, a great appetizer, and a yummy lunch, especially when paired with a delicious salad. The key to the cauliflower poppers, it's in the almond meal. Make sure you're buying the one with the skin still on the almonds. I find this adheres a lot better to the cauliflower, making it really nice and crispy. I want this breading to be super flavorful on its own. I don't want it to just act as a sidekick. So I'm gonna add some spices. I'm gonna add my almond meal straight into my bowl. And then I'm adding my favorite spices. 
some cayenne, some cumin, and some turmeric. Finally, we're gonna add a little pinch of salt. Now, time to just whisk everything together. The turmeric's gonna give it a really nice color as well. It's gonna be really nice and yellow and pretty. It's gonna make this cauliflower glamorous. Make sure it's really well incorporated. All right, this looks really nice. Now I'm gonna whisk up some eggs. I'm using two eggs here. We need something for the breading to stick to, so that's why we're gonna make this little egg bath situation. Perfect. Whisk that up. Okay, this looks pretty good. And this is my favorite part, we get to assemble. So I have half a head of cauliflower cut up into florets, and now I get to just assemble. Using my tongs, my favorite kitchen tool. Gonna stick this straight into the eggs. Roll that around nicely. You want it to be fully coated. Let any of that excess egg just drip off. We want a nice even coating, so that's why we're doing this. And then it's gonna go straight into our almond meal mixture. Let the breading really coat the cauliflower well. We want it all over the cauliflower into all the little nooks and crannies. And now, just gonna transfer straight to our parchment lined pan. See how easy that was? That's crazy, that was so easy. We can all do this. And now I'm just gonna repeat with all of the other cauliflower florets. Make sure you're shaking that excess almond meal off as well. We want a nice, even coating. Pop that straight on the sheet. These are sort of like cauliflower wings. So if you're plant-based, if you're vegetarian, even if you're not, it's kind of a fun and new way to get a veggie in your life. You can also totally use your hands for this. I'm being very neat and clean today. I don't want to crowd anyone on my pan here, so this is going to be my first batch. I am so excited for these to get into the oven. I'm gonna bake them at 350 for about 30 minutes until they're nice and golden and crispy. Well, they're ready. Just FYI, I did flip them once halfway through baking so we can get that nice and even crispness on both sides. I really like to pair this with a variety of sauces. I like to have a sauce flight, a lot of choices here. You can really use whatever you'd like, whatever sauce suits your mood. It's also really great if you wanna eat it solo. I mean, this is what I do at home, so I actually eat them straight off the pan. It's the fact. It just is this really gorgeous almond crusted exterior. Oh, it's so good. There is really nothing this cauliflower cannot do. I'll stand by that forever. Oh, I have to take a picture. I mean, come on. They're begging to be dipped and snacked on. I'm going in. So good. Mmm. That masala on the breading, it's spicy, it's flavorful, and I'm like eating a vegetable. Like, what? You never know.
When you think of oatmeal, you're probably thinking, wow, that's such a breakfast move. But I have to disagree because oats are actually the perfect base for anything savory and grounding and delicious. I'm gonna show you how to make my really hearty, savory turmeric oatmeal with caramelized onions, avocado, and egg and peppery arugula. It is so good. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna do is caramelize my onions because that's gonna take the most amount of time. So I'm just gonna dice them up right now. If I cry, it's not because the onions. It's because I'm really excited to make this, just so we're clear. I'm just gonna heat some olive oil in my pan and start on this caramelization. Adding some olive oil. Now that the oil is shimmering, I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions. Caramelizing the onions is gonna create this really nice full-bodied flavor. It's also gonna add a little sweetness. So oats themselves don't really have a lot of flavor. So by adding all of these different elements, we're really gonna create our own flavor profile here. We're gonna let these caramelize for about 15 to 20 minutes so it gets a really nice deep golden color and then we're gonna get to work on our oatmeal. What's really great about caramelized onions is that you can make them in a huge batch, freeze them so you'll always have some on hand. I'm gonna let these hang out, get really delicious and caramelized, and I'm gonna go grab some of my greens. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. Can you even believe these onions? They look so good. They smell even better, if you can believe it. And now, I'm just gonna upgrade them a bit with some of my favorite spices. I'm gonna add my cumin straight in here. And then my turmeric. And I really just wanna toast the spices in with the caramelized onion so they become nice and fragrant and any of that raw spice smell goes away. And finally, can't forget them, my salt and pepper. I'm gonna just roast these for a few minutes until they smell really fragrant and aromatic and then we're gonna move on to my oats. Now it's time to cook my oats. I'm actually going to be using vegetable broth to cook them in. You can totally use water if you'd like, but I find that veggie broth makes it a lot more flavorful. I'm using rolled oats here, just by the way. Give it a little stir, bring it to a boil, and let the oats absorb all of that liquid. We're boiling. Make sure you stir the oats while you cook them. It's a really aggressive boil. The liquid is reducing, the oats are thickening up. I'm gonna reduce the heat. Now because you have so many savory and grounding flavors here, I want something a bit fresh, a little peppery bite, and that is where my arugula comes in. I'm just gonna stir in a handful here. You can choose however much you wanna add. I like a lot of arugula, so I'm gonna kinda go for it. You just want it to wilt, and then we're gonna take it off the heat. Now it is time for my caramelized onions. You thought I forgot about them. How could I ever forget about them? Gonna add them straight into my oatmeal. Give that a nice stir so everyone becomes friends. Now I'm just gonna remove it from the heat and add all of my toppings. Okay, now I'm just gonna transfer my oatmeal to my bowl. Can't leave any oats behind, that'd be so rude. I mean this color though. Gotta give some props to my turmeric. Really making that magic happen. I'm adding a few things here. I like having a lot of textural elements here, so I'm gonna add some creamy avocado. It's gonna contrast those oats really nicely. I'm gonna add an egg, soft boiled egg, and maybe some more greens. We'll see how I'm feeling. I'm just gonna slice my avocado. First, I wanna just take a moment. Okay. These are kind of fat slices. I will say I didn't intend to make them this, like, chunky, but you know what? I'm just lunching at home. This is real life. The avocado doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm gonna add my egg. I'm using a soft boiled egg here. I mean, I, do I need to say anything? I'm just not. I'm gonna let that speak for itself. A little salt. All right. Little pep. And finally, to finish it all off, 
some herbs. I'm using some cilantro here, but if cilantro freaks you out, you don't like it, I know it scares a lot of people, and that's okay. Like, that's totally fine. Use parsley, omit it, whatever you wanna do. I'm not gonna judge you. This looks like a pretty fab lunch. She's stunning. Um, you know who's gonna be jealous? Basically all of my friends. So I'm gonna have to send a picture to them, show them how cute my lunch is. Maybe it'll inspire them to make their own cute lunch. Okay, I think I'm ready. I'm ready to taste it. I wanna make sure I get a little bit of everything. Some of those oats, the onions, the avocado, the egg. Mmm. I wanna congratulate us all because we can now say goodbye to sad desk lunches forever. Ah, the avocado. From toast topping to sweet treats, even mac and cheese, this tasty green fruit is pretty much everywhere. But did you know the most popular variety, the Haas avocado, was developed right here in Southern California. So I came all the way across the country to find out how farmers and restaurant owners are making sure we're enjoying these for years to come. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're gonna learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. We call this right here, the avocado tunnel of love. <laughs> In the past 20 years, believe it or not, avocado consumption has tripled in the United States. Today, the average American eats eight pounds of these babies every year. I'm at Rancho Vasquez, one of the oldest avocado orchards in the country. Here, the Vasquez family grows several different varieties. Let's avocado check it out. Oh, welcome to Rancho Vasquez. Art? Yes, Nice Art. to meet you. How's it going, sir? Damien Vasquez. Damien, nice welcome to see to you guys. Army veteran Art Vasquez has turned his love for avocados into a true family obsession. Four generations live together on this scenic ranch. Many of them work in the orchard and help run the business. I've never been to an avocado farm. Wow. So uh, it'll be gonna, a lot of fun. You guys gonna give me a tour? Absolutely. All right, let's go. Art's grandfather, Refugio Morones, moved to the U.S. from Mexico in the 1920s. He picked avocados and citrus fruit on several farms, but always dreamed of having his own orchard. When Art was seven, the family purchasing their first acre of this ranch. And that's when my grandfather, Refugio, would start teaching me how to take care of the trees. That's when I, I really started loving picking. My brother and I would pick the avocados, take the avocados down to the town, knocking on doors, selling the avocados. Art put his passion for produce on hold to pursue a career in the auto parts industry. In 2002, he was able to buy the entire property, which was destined to be raised for new houses. We've taken it from 250 trees all the way up to 3,750 trees. This is something, a sustainable legacy that I can leave here and teach my children, grandkids, and the family how to work the earth how to grow things organically. Art had also saved a piece of Golden State history. Avocados are native to Mexico, but some of the first avocado trees in the U.S. were planted in L.A. County in the mid-1800s. Henry Dalton, a wealthy trader who owned ranches in California, fell in love with the fruit during trips to Central America. In 1848, Henry planted the first avocado tree in Azusa. So when he moved to Los Angeles and he took over and bought Rancho Azusa, he knew there was fresh water coming from the Azusa Canyon. And so because of having the fresh water source and the awesome soil, he knew avocados would be great here. During a tour of the ranch, I got to see a living part of that history. What makes it special is one of the first planted avocado trees in the Western United States. This puppy is one of a kind. 
It's like us, Al. It's one of kind, okay? <laughs> and it's still producing fruit? Still producing fruit. It produces anywhere between 500 to six, 700 pounds of fruit a year. Experts estimate this tree is more than 100 years old. It produces a type of avocado known as the fuerte, in Spanish meaning strong. It was the first avocado variety to thrive in the United States because it can withstand cooler temperatures. But in the 1920s, a new variety emerged in SoCal that would ultimately dominate the world market. A guy by the name of Rudolf Haas, he was actually a postal carrier, but his hobby was growing. So he had an orchard at his house about 20 miles from here, La Habra Heights. The Haas avocado was a total accident. An amateur farmer, Rudolf had purchased some mystery avocado seeds. When the tree matured, he was surprised by the dark, bumpy fruit it produced. And that really took off commercially because it has a thicker skin. So for shipping purposes, and it's an amazing tasting fruit. The Fuerte and many other avocados stay green when mature, but the skin on a Haas turns black when ripe, hiding any bruises. It didn't take off right away among consumers in the U.S. So it took a few marketing campaigns for Americans to embrace this creamy variety of the fruit. This fourth, put a little green in your red, white, and blue. Today, 80% of avocados grown worldwide are Haas. Now here, this is one of the first Haas trees commercially ever planted. We've got two Haas trees right here. Until the 90s, the majority of avocados consumed in the country were grown in California and weren't available year round. But all that changed in 1994. President Clinton made NAFTA the law today, linking the United States to Canada and Mexico in one large trading block. When NAFTA passed, avocados from Mexico became available everywhere, and folks could enjoy them anytime. Today, even named avocado toast a top trend of the 2010s. Avocado toast. I'm not sure how this happened, but there came a time in the past 10 years when people began to realize that their lives were not complete without it. Thanks to clever campaigns, new diet trends, and an abundant supply, avocado consumption has boomed in the last two decades, growing into a multi-billion dollar industry. Now, 90% of those avocados come from Mexico. However, this has led to major environmental impacts like deforestation. Rancho Vasquez wants to combat the negative effects of monoculture farming. As an organic orchard, they follow strict guidelines to help protect the land. How have the trees and what you grow tried to lessen the impact on the environment? We pick the weeds by hand. Are we weedy? Because it's all organic. Yeah. So we don't ever spray any weed kill or anything like that. The deer come and eat all the lower leaves and skirt the trees for us. Ah. And they turn that into natural manure. Now, when it comes to picking, avocados require a gentle touch. So we still do it the same high-tech way they did it 100 years ago. Wow. You and this is my grandfather's pole? pole right here. Really? Yeah, this is one of the old school ones. So you can pick any of these you want. Okay. So yeah, you just slide it right up till the avocado goes in the basket, and then you pull on the rope. There you go, you're almost there. Pretty difficult, you're doing pretty darn yeah. good, you know? A little bit further, and then pull the rope. There you there go, you is. got it. <laughs> good job. <laughs> He's a to catch. <laughs> Ta-da! There you go. My That's first a nice avocado. One too. It's going to take a week to a week and a half right now to ripen and let it get soft. How about going and tasting some? Yes, sir. We pick some about a week or so, so they'd be perfect for you. All right, let's do it.
Believe it or not, there are more than 400 varieties of avocados. Rancho Vasquez in Azusa, California, sells six. The Fuerte, Hass, Lamb Hass, Reed, Pinkerton, and Gem. Each has a different shape, taste, and growing season. I've never seen such a, like, a round avocado. The ranch's avocados are prized by chefs and customers for their high oil content. That comes from the area's climate, nutrient-rich mountain soil, and secret farming techniques that have been passed down for generations. The higher the oil content, the better the tasting fruit is. Yeah. And then the longer it'll stay green. You can taste and see the difference with their organic hash. It just keeps it oh, really You can literally fresh. see the oil coming out of it. Yeah, so if you want to try just a little chunk, we'll give you a little chunk. Oh, that's great. Next up, the family favorite, Fuerte. Oh, a, a real, really a different flavor. Absolutely, absolutely. There's almost, it's almost like a saltiness and a creaminess in there. Aside from his wife's guac, Art's favorite way to eat avos is actually with honey. Ooh. It's called avocado dulce, which is avocado candy. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's fantastic. Isn't it great? I would have never thought of that. Guys, this is just amazing. What does it mean for both of you to, to be owners of this, of this legacy? This is a legacy I do want to leave. My family, my grandkids, Damien, and this will be around for, I'm hoping and praying for at least another 100 years, you know? And what does it mean for you, Damien? Oh, it's like you said, just a place where history can keep going. Because the trees were here before us and they're gonna be here after us. So we're just kind of stewards of the land in the meantime. Let's share a little of this guacamole. Yes, sir. Yep. Let the chips fall where they may, as long as they've got guacamole on them. Avila's El Ranchito is a Southern California staple that's been in business for more than half a century. They've got 13 locations and counting of this family-run chain, but no two restaurants are exactly the same. Every Avila's owner puts their own spin on the family's traditional Mexican recipes. But here at the Seal Beach Outpost, they claim to have the best guacamole. So I've come to learn their secrets. It's time to guac and roll. Hey there, wow, got a lot of folks here. The aunts, uncles, siblings, and cousins behind Avalas El Ranchito really treat their guests like family. This location is run by Elise Avila Smith, a third-generation restaurateur. 
She credits the family's success to her grandma Margarita's hospitality. You know, she just focused on really what we focus on, good, fresh food. Salvador and Margarita, or Mama Avila, immigrated from Mexico to the U.S. in 1958. How did they get into the restaurant business? My father had an opportunity to buy a restaurant and talked to my mother and decided, you know, this is a great opportunity. Salvador using his life savings to purchase the old restaurant property in Huntington Park. He turned to his six kids, including Elisa's dad, Victor, for support. We would go after school and help them do whatever needed to be done. And my father was pretty much during the day taking care of the whole restaurant, and my mother was in the kitchen. So she was in the only one in the kitchen. And then, Grandpa Poldo was well, washing yeah. dishes. <laughs> Mama's traditional recipes have been passed down through many generations. They've come from way, way back in Mexico. When it first opened in 1966, Avila's was the only Mexican restaurant in the mostly white neighborhood. Many customers had no interest in Mama's traditional dishes, so she developed a strategy to draw people in. It seemed like natural for my mother to offer the people whatever they wanted, so mm. it was more like a home. If they didn't have it on the menu, then my mother would go in the kitchen and make it anyway. Over the next three decades, the Avila siblings opened six new restaurants in Southern California. This expansion wasn't a coincidence. Americans at the same time were falling in love with Mexican food. In the early 80s, there were an estimated 2,500 Mexican restaurants in the U.S. Today, there are more than 60,000. I was busting tables here as a child. <laughs> Elise witnessed that growth as a kid, watching her dad expand the family business. So I grew up doing homework in a booth. On top of that, I grew up with my grandparents living one street over from me. So I grew up cooking with her for years and years. After college, Elise tried working in other fields, but she was always drawn back to the restaurants. I'd be working by day, you know, I worked for a magazine. And then my brother opened his first restaurant and I ended up serving tables at night. So no matter what I did, I kept ending up back in this business and I loved it. I realized that this was my passion, it's in my blood. How do you qualify to open up a, an obelisk? Well, it's process, let me tell you. <laughs> Is it really? I had to work every position in the restaurant. So I washed dishes, I worked in the kitchen for a few years, but I've done it all. After proving herself for a decade, Elise opened her own Avila's in 2015. When I first opened my restaurant, I worked for several months from about six in the morning till midnight. And finally, I remember my dad and my brother came in for an intervention and said, you need to go home. You gotta sleep. <laughs> you gotta sleep. So I went home and they ran my restaurant for the night. And I knew with my dad and my brother here, there was nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Every Avila's restaurant is unique, reflecting the family member who owns it and the location. They have different decor and specialty menu items. Elise puts her own spin on the brand by offering an extensive tequila cocktail menu. Dad, I'm gonna make you a drink right now. Make it strong. <laughs> Salute, mija. Mm. But there are several dishes you're gonna find at every location. Avocados are crucial to many of the family recipes, including the signature guacamole and their beloved chicken soup. Tell me about Mama Avila's soup. It's that soup that feels like home to me, but it is a chicken breast and rice soup. We make it from scratch every morning, including the broth. We put fresh avocado, cilantro, onion, and tomato in it. And people go, and the first thing they do when they get off the plane is go to have some chicken soup. You mentioned avocado goes into the soup. Tell me about the importance of avocado. It's part of our culture. Bottom line is nobody wants to eat Mexican food without avocado and some guacamole. <laughs> so I'm curious, first you, Victor, what's the secret to a good guacamole? You have to make it, you know, almost really as on a daily basis, almost an hourly basis. It needs to be fresh. It needs to be well seasoned. And a little bit of love. I like to think I make a good guac, but I, <laughs> I'm sure I can learn from the best. So how about showing me how you guys do guac? Before making some guac, I enjoyed a cucumber margarita and got a taste of Mama's famous soup. That's great. I would never think about avocado in chicken soup. Oh my God. I can't take credit for that one, Al. That's all grandma. <laughs> all right, you ready to make some guacamole? You bet. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna dump some fresh garlic in here. Okay. This is a traditional mocha hete. From there, you're gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt Just on top. Just a little, Just bit, a of little salt. bit of love. And then you're gonna use the 
top to go ahead and grind it in there. A mocajete, a Mexican mortar and pestle, is made from volcanic rock. And it's the family secret to great guac. The rough surfaces help crush the ingredients, releasing their natural oils better than chopping them up with a knife. Now we're going to get in some fresh avocado. All right. And then you go ahead and mix that together. Now you got to be gentle with the oh, avocado soft. With, with some love. Be gentle, gentle. In go diced onions, lots of cilantro, and a good squeeze of lime juice. Keep on mixing there, and you got yourself some good, fresh guacamole. I'm going to dig in here with you too, Al. Mm. Oh, yeah. You make good guacamole, Al. <laughs> I've learned from the best. Elise, to be part of something like this, what, what does it mean? Honestly, I feel compelled to keep these beautiful recipes that are from, gosh, my great-great-grandparents running so that everyone that comes to our restaurant is able to taste them and to sit at our table and feel like family and just be a part of ours. Cheers. The ceviche bar a little different from a, a sushi bar. It's like a sushi bar, but more Mexican. Uh huh. <laughs> this lively food court is home to several family-owned hidden gems. In fact, here you'll find Holbush, a modern eatery renowned for its sustainable seafood. The chef behind this vibrant menu pairs flavors from his childhood in Mexico with the freshest of California fare. Gilberto Satina never thought he would dedicate his life to cooking but his summers spent on the Yucatan Peninsula would later inspire a bold move. Since I was a teenager, growing up in the coastal region, I would go diving with my cousins. We would dive down for octopus, uh, we'd get lobsters, we'd get sea snails, and then he would take that back and cook it. And that was one of the first times that I felt a direct connection to food because even back then, there was a disconnect, you right. know? Food came from the supermarket. And it was the first time I saw something that was like directly from the sea and you can cook it and eat it right away. So that kind of blew my mind. Gilberto immigrated to the U.S. when he was five years old. His father, Gilberto Sr., a former civil engineer, worked various restaurant jobs to support the family. How did your family transition from that kind of grassroots sort of food service to right. a real formal restaurant? It, it really was through the help of the nonprofit that, you know, operates Mercado La Paloma. This bustling market is run by Esperanza, or Hope, a nonprofit dedicated to revitalizing South Los Angeles and helping first-time business owners. They gave a small business training, basic you know, restaurant health department training. They co-signed loans so my dad could purchase the equipment. It was my dad's dream to have a restaurant that represented our Mexican food, the food of the Yucatan, which is very distinct from other regions of Mexico. In 2001, Gilberto Sr. opened the family's first restaurant, Chichen Itza. The menu featuring traditional dishes like conchinita pibil, 
Salbutes, and Panuchos. Lo empezamos la mamá de Gilberto y yo, o sea, mi esposa y yo. El, al principio éramos dos personas nada más. They needed help, but Gilberto was reluctant to join the family business. I didn't want to cook. I didn't want to be in the kitchen because I, I grew up in a household where we always, you know, cooking was always used to make ends meet, like a lot of, you know, immigrant families. So when we opened the restaurant and my dad asked me to come along and help him out for six months, I was front of the house. Slowly I just discovered the cooking and that I enjoyed it and, you know, started learning from my dad. Even without formal training, Gilberto quickly learning the ropes, becoming a savvy businessman. Ten years in, Chichen Itza was thriving with dozens of employees. They even released a cookbook. Con el paso de los años, finalmente empezó a sentir la misma pasión que yo tenía por el negocio. After taking over at Chichen Itza, Gilberto was ready for a new challenge, one inspired by those summer boat trips in Mexico. Where does the name Holbosch come from? So Holbosch is a place. It's an island off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. He wanted to bring tropical, fresh from the sea vibes, along with an elevated experience, to diners in South Los Angeles. When Holbosch opened in the same market, it changed many perceptions of what Mexican food could be. We go outside of the realm of Yucatan and we do food from all different coastal regions of Mexico. Gilberto's fusion dishes allow the freshest fish to shine. Menu staples include seasonal ceviches and an octopus taco. His innovative cooking has wowed locals and critics alike. How does it feel to be nominated for a James Beard Award for this? Mm. After the shock, I think the first thing that I felt was extreme pride in my team. To a certain level, I guess it feels a little bit like validation because we're doing something slightly outside of the box. You look across Mexican cuisine and, and one of the commonalities is the avocado. Why does the avocado work so well across cuisines in Mexico, but especially your cuisine? The pairing of avocado goes extremely well with raw seafood preparations like ceviches and cocteles, and they're very bright, light, and acidic. I think avocado is the perfect complement because it gives it a little bit, you know, creamy richness. That delicate balance is best represented in the shrimp and scallop aguachiles. And I couldn't wait to try making it. So aguachile is super simple. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take, we're gonna make a marinade that's gonna cook or denature our scallops, right? So we're just gonna take some, some cilantro. Uh -huh. Next up, the chili. Serrano peppers bring the heat. Persian cucumbers cool it down. There's a pinch of salt, ice to prevent oxidation, and a squeeze of lime juice. Then the marinade blends for just about a minute. Now, we're just gonna take a bowl. Go ahead and put a couple of uh, spoonfuls of these beautiful Baja California Bay scallops. Ooh, look at those. Now, we're gonna pour the marinade and hold on to the spoon for stirring. Perfect, that's about right. We wanna let that marinate for at least five minutes. Gilberto takes his agua chile to the next level with an avocado rose. After pitting and peeling, it was time to get slicing. Your knife can be straight because your avocado is at an angle, and we're pull oh. cutting. You're just gonna do this, Al. Look. Okay. The key to a great rose? Super thin slices. We're hiring, you know. <laughs> okay. Now the next step. Hands, right? This we're gonna do this this motion. We're gonna fan out the okay. avocado, right? Mm -hmm. So, can you see that? Oh, wow. Yeah, there you go. Looking good there. I think that's uh, good enough to roll. You're gonna start at the tip right here, okay. and you just roll this one like that. You see how that's forming a really big flower? Yes. This is a pretty advanced skill, yeah. but I think it's one worth practicing. Oh, yeah. And it's a nice party trick, you know? Sure. Impress your friends. Yeah. So, which one should we use? <laughs> that one. Made by the professional. Time to plate it up. That's looking beautiful. You're a lot neater doing this than I am. I'll yeah. take like a spoonful of them and just yeah. drop it on there and then arrange them on the plate. Ah, pro tip. And of course, the finishing touches. Wow. That is our scallop aguachile. And I helped make it. 
Can something this pretty taste as good as it looks? Mm, that looks like a good bite. Mm. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. But yet so simple. Thank you, sir. Al, oh, it was a pleasure. Fantastic. The Haas Avocado may have started out as a lucky surprise, but for decades, its popularity has been no accident. The Mexican-American culinary traditions passed down through the years have made this delicious and nutritious fruit a staple for so many of us across the country. And thanks to generations of enterprising families, this bumpy green fruit is going to have a very long shelf life. This morning on Today Table, we are making a refreshing and citrusy bowl. Is that a word? Citrusy. citrusy. Yeah. Yeah, a citrusy absolutely. bowl that is perfect for the summer. Well, our citrusy chef, Elena <laughs> Besser, is the host of the new series, Head of the Table, on Today All Day. Elena, good to see you. So Hi. great to be with my pals today. Yes. And this salad is right on time. It is right on time. And here's the thing. This summer, we want to be grilling, but we also want to be chilling. Oh. So, you guys, I had to do it. So I Where's my mic so I can <laughs> drop it? Drop that mic. Um, so we are are making a delicious dressing that is a cumin lime dressing and mm -hmm. essentially what we have here is we have some honey you could swap that with agave mm -hmm. we have lime zest which we're adding in okay we've got some lime juice mm -hmm. we have some delicious cilantro Ooh. if you don't like cilantro you can swap it with parsley okay we have grated garlic nice. i know this seems like a lot but it's all going to be worth it i promise what about have, a little ginger this is jalapeno you could absolutely throw ginger in there if you want jalapeno we have cumin yeah. Chanel. 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 That's your face. jalapeno face yes oh, right. your business and oh then, that's right jalapeno business <laughs> and then a little bit of chili powder Every time. So what I like to do is I like to mix all of this together mm -hmm. first, and then I will slowly add in the oil to just emulsify why it. Why do you have to do that? Um, the reason why is just it's going to come together so much easier if you okay. slowly add in all of that oil. Mm. And this is going to turn into a luxurious dressing. But guess what? What? It's also our shrimp marinade. Mm. Oh, my gosh. It's a twofer. It's a twofer. That's where the chilling comes in. And don't forget the salt and mm -hmm. the pepper. we got to awaken those flavors. Now, is it better? Could you make this ahead of time you and let it kind of? Sit there. Absolutely, and those flavors will intensify. Mm -hmm. They'll meld together. We have half of that marinade here. We're going to brush it onto mm. some corn, okay. and then that's going to go right onto our grill. If you are someone like me and you don't own a grill, uh, you can just use a grill pan like we're showing you right here, and that's just going to still give it the, the same taste? Yes, it does. You are able to get that nice smoky char yeah. taste. Mm -hmm. You'll be pleasantly surprised by okay. how much of that flavor you'll still be getting. Okay. This goes Ooh, about a like minute no on each side. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it's coming how through. Um, about like a minute on each side, probably like cooked? five minutes total. Oh. You'll get that char, but that also good. you can eat raw corn and it's absolutely delicious oh. anyway. Um, this ends up going into the shrimp. We don't want it in for too long because we have lime juice in there, oh, so, so we don't cook? want to cook it. Exactly. Okay. We're not making ceviche here. Right. But then after that, you're going to thread it onto some skewers. You're going to soak the skewers? Al, you'd think you know how to cook or something. I mean, right. seriously. For about 30 so, minutes, I believe. Yes. Yeah, so oh you're going to thread it onto the skewers just to make, and this is fun. You could serve it on the skewers, mm -hmm. or you could cook it without the skewers. I love that you right. did the double skewer because I've made the mistake of not. And, and like, then it's flipping all over the place. It's oh. running around, and yeah. you mm -hmm. want it to stay put and get that even char. So we're going to cook this about two minutes per it's side. So now and you've left your corn cool We've left off. our corn. We let our corn cool off. We cut it off the cob. I Ugh. like putting it a little bowl in here, mm -hmm. set it down. It makes it really easy so it's easy to balance. We add in our mm. red onion. Uh -huh. And if onion, red onion's too intense for you, what mm -hmm. I like to do is I'll just soak it in some ice water and it oh. will take out that astringency. Oh, that's good to so know. So it ends up mellowing it out. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to add some diced avocado. That's a, really, that's a nice yeah. tip there. It's fun, yeah. right? Pro tip. And how tip. long, how long do you have to soak two. it? Just like a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. I would say otherwise like five minutes would be the best. And avocado, by the way, check out Al's new episode on his show, Family Meal, the avocado oh. episode. Mm -hmm. yeah. Award winning. Yeah. Nice. Award winning show. <laughs> Award winning show. And then we have some feta as okay. well. Gosh. And guess what? What? Oh, More dressing. marinade and dressing. Wow. So we it's a threefer. It's, really? It turns out it's, a it's three not fur. just a twofer, it's a threefer. <laughs> so we are adding in the rest right. of that. Mm -hmm. We're hitting it with a little bit here. I'm just going to turn these. Yeah. Let's see. Look, we're already Boom. getting Take a nice long. char Lena, on this there. this is so good. And we add a little bit of salt. You like it? And then, oh, my gosh. Yes, Al, because we want it to fall from the bottom so it will evenly shirt. distribute. Fantastic. <laughs> and then you're going to serve this up. You could either leave it on the skewer. <laughs> you could 
take it off the skewer. And you know what? Oh my gosh. One more thing. Why what? not throw a little tortilla chip on there? Oh, Some yeah. Extra oh, you crunch. had a plate. I like yeah, well, put that no, I Yeah, I know, but I had this one. plate. This, this is the beauty. <laughs> Why would I go for that try, plate? Try that salad. When I go salad. for this plate. This salad? It's like one of my favorite things. It is so fun to be here. It's awesome to have you. Everything you make is yummy. That's right. If you love chips and guacs and your today's Masterclass Monday is for you, we're talking avocados and mangoes, which can be challenging to choose and to use. Yeah, exactly. And here to share her tricks is Gabby Dolkin. She's an Instagram star, cookbook author, creator of the popular food blog, What's Gabby Cooking? And Gabby's in her L.A. kitchen up bright and early with us. Hey, Gabby, good morning. Hi guys, good mama, morning, how are should you? Should we call you good morning, yes, mama? We, How's that babe? babe? She's good, she's right behind the camera just staring at me. Oh, she's <laughs> filming. She's working camera She's a one. genius. Good, she's seven months old. Gosh, she oh, is adorable look and look legs. at her little legs. Cutie. Oh. Look at those rolls. Oh. Um, okay, <laughs> let's get to cooking. I bet, I bet your babe loves avocados. They're so good, but they're kind of hard to choose. How do yeah. we know if they're ripe? Okay, so I literally wrote an entire cookbook on avocados 100 years ago. So mm -hmm. I like to buy my avocados when they're like this. They're like bright green, they're rock hard, they feel literally like rocks, and then I let them ripen on my counter. If you buy them like this and you need them faster, I like to stick them in a brown paper bag with an avocado, with a banana or an apple, and that ripens it. And when they're ripe, they look a little bit more like this. They're a little darker, they're a little softer. When you want to eat your avocado, it should have just a slight bit of give to it, kind of like the palm of your hand right here. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know it's ready to go. Gabby, we did And some... if you want to extend it yeah. from there, pop it in the fridge for a couple days. Yeah, that's a good thing. I think it keeps it for five days, your note said. But also, we did something this morning that was a little controversial. We put avocado in our cereal. Have you ever heard of anything I like that? I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. Um, no. <laughs> okay. No. I don't know if I would do it, but I I'm support right anyone who does that. I trust Gabby. All yeah. right, Gabby, before we get any further, let's. So we're going to make a mango to a mango salsa. And how do you pick a good a good mango? So similar to an avocado, when you when you buy a mango, sometimes they're rock hard, and they're, yeah. they're different varieties. Also, like we have a different variety in my kitchen than you guys have right there on yeah. set. But when they're rock hard, also like an avocado, give them a couple days. You can put them in that same bag with the banana and an apple. Good trick. When they're ripe, this one is all yellow, mm. and it should also have just a tiny bit of give to it. Again, like the this part of your palm, mm -hmm. and it should smell really fragrant. Like mm -hmm. when it smells it's fragrant, it's ready. ready to go. Okay. Okay, so you made this del Sorry, this is delicious <laughs> avocado and mango salsa <laughs> and with salmon. I know my toe's okay. Everything's fine. Show us what you made. Okay, so I, this is what we're making quickly. It's this beautiful salmon. Mm -hmm. When you're seasoning salmon, I just buy like a little filet. I season it heavily mm. with any of your favorite seasonings. I just use my favorite. It's called Gabby's Go-To. Salt and pepper, 425 mm. degree oven for like 10 to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to turn on your oven, you can easily do it in a grill. You would just do indirect, it would, you'd put it on indirect heat mm -hmm. and shut the grill and cook it same amount of time. So cut that, show us so how to cut that mango. that's done, mm -hmm. yes, we're gonna cut the mango. Okay, so there's a huge pit in this situation. Yes, you are gonna sure hold is. it, you can hold it up like mm -hmm. this. You and you're gonna take mm -hmm. your knife and just mm -hmm. run it right down, like just slightly off the center so you don't hit the pit. Turn it the other way oh. and do the exact same thing. If you mm -hmm. hit, if you cut it a little bit too close to the center and you hit the pit, just move your knife out a bit. And then from here, what we're mm -hmm. going to do is take our knife and very gently score the like the mm -hmm. inside part of the mango mm -hmm. both ways, like kind of like tic tac toe, mm -hmm. just like this. And then you're going to pop it out. Mm -hmm. And take your knife. I'm using like a fillet, like a fish fillet knife. This is what you would use to take the skin off of a fish. You could also use a chef's knife, anything you want. And you're just going to carefully Look at that. run it wow. on the bottom, mm -hmm. just like this. Yeah, and you know what? Hoda is a mango all of expert. Your mango. Yeah, that's how I give it to what? my kids. I call those mango pops. I she pop pops it out. It and, and just lets them just eat it yeah. straight from the skin. Mm -hmm. That's I sh like. How old does Poppy, my Poppy, need to be in order to have a mango? I think seven she needs, months acceptable. She needs some teeth, just one. Or two. One tooth. <laughs> one tooth. Okay. <laughs> Same thing with the avocado. When you're doing an avocado, you kind of just spin it mm -hmm. around your knife, twist it open, mm -hmm. and then you're mm -hmm. also just gonna score the mm -hmm. same thing. And instead of popping it open. Like you did the mango, you're gonna pop it open, or you're gonna scoop it out with a spoon. And mm -hmm. how do you like and what do you do to season those two? Uh, yeah, fruits? show us how you make your salsa. 
So the salsa, we're just going to put in some green onions. You could also do chives. Mm -hmm. um, I have, look at these like super cool green zebra tomatoes mm -hmm. from the farmer's market. Mm, Those beautiful. are going to go in. And lime? A little bit of lime juice, a little bit of pepper. And then if you're not feeding this to kids or whatever, you could add a little jalapeno, yum, habanero, yum. just to give it a little bit of spice. Yummy. And then you just give this a stir and top it on anything. But you, if you hate fish, put it on chicken, yes. put it on steak, put it on whatever you want. Okay. Tofu, looks great. It's all Gabby. gonna be. Gabby, thank, you thank you so much. Thank you so much, so Gabby. Good. If you're looking for something tasty to whip up this weekend, we have got you covered. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer with a delicious meal that uses just six ingredients. Good morning, Joy. Morning. Hey, guys. I have something so special for your weekend menu, and it's sort of like a mix and eat situation. It comes together in five minutes and it is good it is saucy it's smoky i think you're really gonna love it and what i love about it is you got a, it's kind of a hack in that you just get a, 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 a supermarket rotisserie chicken and you go to town get us started okay so i'm calling it my chipotle pulled chicken in avocado boats and we're starting with the pulled chicken so here i have one and a half cups of shredded chicken you could use any leftover chicken that you have in the fridge but what i did was took the easy way out Picked up a rotisserie chicken. You take the skin off, and then just, just like that. using your hands, Sometimes they do. Yeah, you're just gonna shred it up just mm -hmm. like this until you have a great big pile. So let me move this over. Now comes the easy part. I have jarred salsa. This oh. is just a half a cup, and you know you're the boss of your salsa. You can use mild, medium, spicy, whatever right. you prefer. And the nice part about the salsa is it does all the chopping for you. There's chopped peppers. There's mm -hmm. chopped onions in it. Here, this is sort of the star of the show. This is um, chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. So I have two of them chopped up. And I want to mm -hmm. show you what they look like because you could buy them in the grocery store in jars. Oh. And you're going to take – look oh, at see these peppers? Perfect. So these are, are dry, smoked jalapenos. Well, you know – not so spicy. It has a little bit of heat. So if you're sensitive to heat, I would start with one, mm -hmm. and um, then you could always add a second. I like but to add a third, truth be told. It's so smoky and so tangy. And now what I do is add an extra teaspoon of the adobo sauce uh -huh. right inside. Mm -hmm. And this is where I said it's just a toss and mix. This is going to come together. Wow. And if you're looking for a creamier chicken salad consistency, it's also really nice to add two or three tablespoons of a light mayo or a Greek yogurt. Hmm. It dilutes the, the flavor a little bit, mm -hmm. but it makes it super creamy. And then you might want to add an extra pepper in there <laughs> and a little bit more adobo sauce. But the, so the pepper here, has so much flavor that it's. I feel like it doesn't take much to go a long way. You are so right, Dylan. And now and here's I the just... superfood part. Okay, guys, we have an avocado packed with potassium, packed with fiber. I split it in half. I took out the pit. That and is a perfect just avocado. Going... It is a perfect no avocado. brown or anything. 
I have got so lucky this morning. <laughs> I really did. I don't really know until you then, get into it. And what I like to do to take it over the top, let me get, I'm going to add a little bit Ooh. of extra adobo sauce. And I'm going to show you, I have some finished right mm -hmm. over here. Look at this. Wait. Oh, this looks so yummy. It is. It is so out of this world. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. And then I noticed and on the I, side there, you've got, if you have some extra, you, you've got something else you could do with it. Yeah. So now I'm going to show you a little bit of cilantro. Mm -hmm. oh, I nice. just love cilantro. I know some people are team cilantro, some not so much. I'm going to show you how to make a wrap now with it. So if you want to use that same, whoops, that same flavorful chipotle chicken, mm -hmm. you could then Take the avocado. You see what I've done here? Another uh -huh. beautiful bright green one. I got super lucky. I'm going to smash it and spread it on a whole grain tortilla. Now I take my... Hey, Joy, I love how... Who's, pulling, pulling, who's pulling that stuff away? I love that. <laughs> you know who it is. Is that Ian? <laughs> Ian Bowers in the house. <laughs> you know, when you guys um, put me back on the plaza last week and the week before, Ian thought he was retired. He, he uh, you know, Not handed so in his NBC badge and then suddenly he was called back. <laughs> so now I'm going to roll this up. And oh, that is so easy. Wow, look at that. It could not be easier. I'm going to slice it up. Oh, that looks so So whether you have it. your boats or a wrap. There you go. Look at that. You are and ready to is. eat. And Joy, that's a wrap for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, Ian, Can just I pull just that out, too. Can I very quickly say... Oh. Sure, go ahead. I'm going to say happy birthday to my hero, my heart, my dad, 83 Aww. years old. Aww. And I'm going to tell you, he is so fit. He still beats all my brothers on the basketball court. Swims wow, every day. Wow, good for him. Wow. Artie and we're Schlatt, playing the Smucker's birthday music. Look at that. Very quick. <laughs> happy birthday. Nice. He, he's not 100, though. Okay, let's just make sure He's that's not clear. 100, but he is on a mission to make it onto that Smucker's jar. All right. Thanks so much, Joy. <laughs> You know, Adam, as the host of The Food That Built America, well, now he's out with a new show, biting into the most memorable foods of an iconic decade. It's called Adam Eats the 80s. That's a great title. <laughs> he's here to tell us all about it and, of course, do some throwback cooking for us. Adam, I think of the 80s. Beef stroganoff was a meal that my mother made. Mm -hmm. Classic. And like, when I think of the 80s, and that was like kind of a fancier meal, yeah. but it really sort of in in encapsulated like 80s food. We're going to make a classic here in a minute, but tell me more about the show. So basically, yeah, like you nailed it. We looked through one of the most dynamic decades in American history through the prism of food. Everyone's done fashion and fads and 
big shoulder pads and big hair and leg warmers and Jennifer Beals off the shoulder. Yeah, flash dance. And sweatshirts. But, remember, but what was the food? Because like there was Hot Pockets, oh, there was yeah. the microwave, the proliferation of the microwave. So, yeah, that's exactly it. You nailed it. You had kids had agency because you had latchkey kids because you had two parents right. working. Yeah. Right. You had Reagan saying you could advertise directly to children, so you had a proliferation of sugared cereals. You didn't eat eggs because tires. of Nancy Reagan and the drugs. Exactly. Because you're bringing drugs. Right, exactly. You had the microwave so those latchkey kids could cook. Right. Right. But also, you had ranchers carrying over massive debt into the 80s. They sold off beef. Beef became more expensive, so chicken started appearing on oh, our fast right. food menus. That's right. And people started pivoting, getting a few more European so flavors in there. What a great idea for a show. Thank you. What did you bring for us today? This so a- this is my version of another 80s classic, Sloppy oh. Joe's. You saw this on the lunch menu? Mm-hmm. Sloppy it's Joe's? Fantastic. You were you so like excited. I think they should like this back in the day. If yeah. only. If yeah. only. Yeah. Let's exactly. look, well, ma'am, Adam, start cooking like while, while we talk. Go ahead and, and we'll get it. Are you making, is this a chili? Is that what it is? Well, no, it's essentially similar to it. Not, that, not different than taco meat. We have some ground beef. We have some oil browning in there. You want to help me with yeah, this? Yeah, So sure. add the onion first. Okay. Yep. And what we'll do is we'll sweat that. We'll add a little pinch of salt. And we'll stir that. When the onions start getting a little bit translucent, we'll start adding in. You can swap this out for turkey. Is that an 80-20? Uh, yep, 80-20, Chuck. You could add uh, turkey. You could even do ground chorizo if you want to change the mm-hmm. flavor or a combination. There you go. Break it up with there. Yep. Once the meat starts to brown, I guess... Uh, Roughly about five minutes, we'll move on. We have um, cumin. We have, obviously, you want to add a little bit of uh, chili powder. We want to add a little bit of pepper. Um, but all the great flavors that you normally find in, like, taco seasonings. So we have some that's already cooked down. You can see it's simmering away here. So what we're going to do is how comfortable you smash and garlic. I, I'm, I, well, I'll do it, but how do you, how do, you do it? Okay, use so the, 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 like that? The, yeah, what you want to do mark? is, yeah, exactly. You want to make sure that it's stable. And then just okay. press. Mine's a little more violent than that. Okay. And how much do you have to break it down? Just that much. Actually, okay. you could you could break it even with your hands. The larger pieces will prevent it from burning. You remember Hamburger Helper? Oh, yes. oh my God. Helps your hamburger make a great Did meal. Did it have these great spices or not so much? This is a very no, probably, elevated version. Probably, okay. probably not. I'm going to guess that they didn't. So we have these spices. Go ahead. Drop it on in there. And again, we want to make sure that it, uh, it browns but not burns. Burned That's garlic good. is an awful, awful You guys are eating it. Just tell me how it is. It we got two minutes left. Are there fruits in here? Yes. Well, that, that, that's exactly it. So then we're also going to put in a can yep. of tomatoes okay. and all of the juice, and we want them to break up, and that's also going to get that beautiful that moisture, soupy yep. uh, exterior. So now all we right, have now our we corn build. chips. Yep. Exactly. Oh. So um, I had um, chili Frito pie at the Texas State Fair. Yep. Blew me away. I love it. So basically we're going to take the uh, sort of sloppy Joe mixture yep. and we'll layer it on top of this. The best way to do it is just sort of dot it, spread it out. We have a pound of cheese. I mean, you can eat this as a separate appetizer. Oh, yeah. This is yeah, this, this, this is going is, on the sandwich. This is just joy. That yeah, is amazing. Absolutely. Yes. This is, yeah. This it's a time warp when you eat that, right? Oh you go God. back to the 80s, that, the, that mm, flavor, right? And it's elevated with the onion. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So then we'll put a little bit on the sandwich oh, and we'll top it, it with sliced avocado. Oh, see, it's fancy. You got the pickled onions. Exactly. Some mm. pickled red onions, which you could, you could buy them. You could make them super easily. Yeah, this is not the sloppy Joe we had at the No, no, no this is school. not your cafeteria sloppy Joe. Oh, my mm. gosh. You got to get to these onion rings. We got to get to the onion rings. Okay, we got to get to the onion rings. Okay, so. But they're outstanding. Okay, so it's really simple uh, smoked paprika. Uh, smoked paprika onion rings. Mm-hmm. Now, it may look like a lot of smoked paprika. It's a very strong flavor, but it actually, it's infused in the egg, in the panko, in the flour, Fantastic. and Fantastic. when it cooks, it actually gets a little sweeter. That's so, so yeah, right. I didn't like know. Like the best onion ring I've ever had. That's the really? secret. Yeah. It's so thin. Yeah. It's so crunchy. That's huge. So we got Vidalia onions, super sweet. We're going to use fair. a mandolin, so it always comes out in level. And I like the, using the guide because you can see, first of all, you're always going to get a uniform slice, okay. but also you're going to protect your fingers. Yeah. So then what you want to do with any breading station, you go one flour to egg, the other hand egg to breadcrumb. So you can take the, the right hand, I guess, we'll go flour. Yep. To the egg. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Because if you oh, don't, you'll, you'll end. It is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Best onion ring ever. You know, you get an onion ring and the onion compliment. immediately comes, yeah. it falls yeah. apart. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly and it's thick and it's just, you don't really it's want that. Right. What kind of oil are you using? All so you want to make salt. sure you use um, any kind of oil with a high smoke point. I prefer peanut. Keep talking, guys. It hits 350 Do me a favor and check out the show. It's fantastic. We're back with a great chicken franchise. And of course, you can find all the recipes at today.com slash food.
way to teach kids about the importance of traditions and culture is through family recipes, and that's exactly what our friend Marcela Valladolid is doing in her debut children's cookbook. What is it? What is it called? Tell me what your what it's called. Cocinando on Cookster. I love it. It's a collection of Mi Familia's recipes. Yes. And today she's making one of those recipes in the book. Marcela, we're yes. so happy to have you in person. Yes. yes. So welcome in. Yes. And this is really a book for your daughter. Is that right? It really is. She always used to make me read cook, cook, cookbooks to her at night, but she's not in school yet, which means we only speak Spanish at home with the kids yeah. until they go to school. So mm -hmm. I would be translating in real time, and I was like, I need to write a book for her that's written in English Brilliant. and Spanish. Oh my God, so you're incredible. Here okay. we are. So, so we're so starting with some flautas. flautas. Yes, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, which is kind of weird for me because I celebrate Hispanic yeah. heritage like every day of yeah. my life. Yeah. I, yes. But thank you for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, thank you for coming to cook this no, yeah, absolutely. So flautas. And this book is about all those little tips, right? So flautas are rolled up taquitos. And people usually don't know, like, the simple tips. Like, if you warm up a tortilla, it's much easier for you oh. to roll it up oh. without it breaking. So you can microwave. Yeah, that makes sense, right? It, it's that, just so easy. And, and that's then, just shredded chicken? It's is that just it? shredded chicken okay. that you can get from the rotisserie okay. chicken from the market if you don't right. want to boil it yourself. Right. Like, make your life easy. And okay. you don't need to put anything on it to make it stick. You just kind of... You don't. And, and you the trick the, with flautas is if you're not an experienced flautas, the maker, like the women in Mexico, they don't need to do the toothpick thing. They figure it out. God knows how they make it stick, but it's right. thick. But if you're not a professional flauta maker, so you use the toothpicks. And, and you can fry the toothpicks? Oh, absolutely. You just have to make sure. In. Yeah, that's really hot oil. But there you go. And you just leave those in there for a couple of minutes, and maybe we'll take them out so we don't burn your studio. Okay, I have a crazy question. Yeah. Can you air fry flautas? Absolutely, 100%. So my idea would be you brush it with a little bit of oil, throw it in the air fryer, and that's it. Wait, I am going to try to air fry, fry a flauta you, tonight. You can. Know if it works. You can. I'll tell you what you can do. You can bake or air fry tortilla chips too, but we'll get there in a second. Okay. You're going right. to love it. So okay. now we make the rest. So another thing about the book is introducing folks and kids to like the traditional stuff, but not too spicy. Mm -hmm. A pico de gallo salsa or salsa mm -hmm. bandera because it has the colors of the flag. You've got some tomatoes that are seated, some onion, mm -hmm. cilantro for sure, mm -hmm. jalapeno, and you can mm. measure like... But do you do the jalapenos without seeds? You do without the seed. The spice is actually in the vein, oh. not so much oh. the seed. Oh. Yeah, so you take out the vein. And if you don't like spice, just do a little sprinkle of jalapeno. My mom's trick, oil in the salsa. Oil and, and yeah. lemon. And lemon and, and a little pepper. salt and pepper, and that's it. And you've got your beautiful salsa. That's okay. beautiful. Yeah, and then oh, to dress them up, Yum. another great one for my mom, always dress the lettuce. A little oil, a little vinegar, brings mm. out all of the flavor, mm. and then you just dress it, and then go Mexican with like a here. big, huge, you know. And salad on top almost. The whole thing, and okay. you've got some beautiful Let's ones try, here. here. Here's some flautas. I'll dress these And what do you add on top? Caita cheese? Yeah, so dress lettuce. Like, that's one of the things I teach in my cooking mm. class. Always dress the lettuce in these Mexican antojitos. A little mm. cotija mm. cheese and Mexican crema because why not? Because mm. it's so delicious. Mm. Come on over. Bring your Wait, flautas, ladies. It's so mm. crunchy and yummy. Okay, and you were having like a, like a heart attack because we baked the chips, which I, I love. I think it's a brilliant idea. Yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing. Tortilla chips are awesome, but if you bake them, you might be like a little more willing to put them on the dinner oh, table, it's right? It's good, like good for your kids. And here's what's great about this recipe. Like you brush them with oil and Mask, you bake them. What is this? It's a um, corn tortilla. You has to a be corn. You and cut it up. Okay. Yeah, you cut it up. You can cut it up into stars. You can use okay. cookie cutters. You can okay. have so much fun Wait, with this. Wait, that's so cute. So much fun. I do it for Christmas. Christmas and do Christmas shapes and make like a tortilla chip Christmas. Of but anyway, that's do. a different. I love you. That's what, a different. Segment. What is that spice you're putting on? Anything you want. I'm using chili lime powder, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of rosemary. Mm. That's the thing about mm. homemade chips. You can season them with whatever you want. And so how, simple. So they're brushed with oil, seasoned, and then you put them in the oven. 350, 15, 20 minutes that's until it? they're nice and crisp. You want to okay. make sure they're dried out. Nobody likes soggy tortilla chips. Now you're gonna make us a little guac. Simplest thing in the world. All of these recipes come from my mom, which is what's so special about the book. The secret ingredient what? to guac. Pause is distilled white vinegar. What? That's why you guys were eating it and you were like, oh Wait, my God. What? It I've brings, never heard that. It's it's how my mom used to make it when I was a kid. So and li and li is that lime? lime? And yeah, and then you just mash it in salt. Lime and that's, vinegar. that's all you need for a good what about guacamole. What about cilantro, no? You can, but, but I'm a purist when it comes to guacamole. And you don't put tomatoes, which I'm is interesting. Here, you, can. This, you can, you certainly can. You can find like, Pomegranate seeds, mango, yeah. anything around yeah. across it's, Mexico. Like way. people are getting adventurous. But for me, guacamole is just this with some baked chips that are seasoned, and that's it. This mm. is amazing. So good, right? We love these. Mm. Thank you.
today all day up next on hashtag cooking. Samadada is saying bye-bye to boring avocado.